emotionally things just come over you sometimes, you know what I mean? I mean, for seven and a half years, I've kept my mouth shut. I've always played by the rules and been team player. Where did it get me? Nowhere. Until I stepped outside of the boundaries and went on my own and became selfish. <laughs> I finally succeeded and became a world champion. Bobby Roode means more to Bobby Roode than anything else. Dixie's not happy about it because why? Because I'm the face of the company? Because she has to look every day at herself knowing that Bobby Roode, this selfish prick, is the face of her company? She's pissed off at me? I don't mean, what, what does she get the right to be pissed off at me? I'm just doing what I set out to do 13 years ago, and that's to be a world champion. It doesn't matter how you get there. He wasn't brought up to basically cheat. I really don't know what to say anymore. He's not the one here that has to deal with why is daddy cheating. I don't care who I step on. I don't care who I hurt. Tracy's here with two kids, and Bobby's not around. We've left numerous messages trying to get a hold of him. I can't even get in touch with him. I try and phone, and I don't get a call back. I am the leader of the selfish generation. I am the hit factor of professional wrestling. Bobby, you're a selfish, selfish person. Bobby's not seeing how selfish she's been. It's not even about the world title. It's about Bobby Roode being a freaking what would I say to Bobby Roode? That I'm sick and tired of the way he's acting. I'm sick and tired of the position that he's put me in. I spit in my boss's face. I mean, who wouldn't want to do that? <laughs> Pretty amazing, right? <laughs> spit in the face of Dixie Carter. Tonight, I'm taking it off. This is my time. This is my era. And there isn't anything or anybody that's going to get in my way. Selfish generation, I am the hit factor of professional wrestling. And now, TNA Wrestling and Direct Auto Insurance present Final Resolution. Slightly difference of opinion from the crowd here at the Impact Zone for final resolution and a big-time match to kick it off with Van Dam and Daniels. You got to give like a size advantage here to Van Dam. 
And I, I, experience-wise, it probably would edge out Van Dam. What do you think, Mike, on that? I, I think that uh, I would say maybe in terms of overall years. Yeah. But, but when you maybe pair it down to high-profile matches, yeah, big-time matches. I, I think RVD would probably get the edge, don't you think? I think I definitely agree with that. And you see right there, Daniels doesn't want to get one of those nasty strikes that Van Dam could possess, either with his hands or his feet. Both these men have uh, been up and down the roads and definitely not their first rodeo, as the expression goes. Feeling out process here in the early going. You talked about the lower body of RVD. That's really what Daniels has to watch out for. Well, that's where that uh, massive explosiveness of Van Dam, which I talked about as soon as he walked out here, comes from. It's from his... Lower, you know, his lower body, his glutes, his hamstrings, his quads, his calves. Those kicks are explosive. So thick. Watch out. Whoop. Good thing Daniel's ducked. With a quick roll up by Van Dam. Leads to a quick two count from referee Earl Hebner. Watch the backslide. Oh, well, look like Daniel's tried to go for a double leg. Van Dam sprawled a little bit and caught that backslide, backslide right into that side headlock. So. Van Dam one step ahead of Daniels in the early goings of this match. In terms of RVD's opponent, Daniels, he can beat you with high risk moves. He can beat you on the mat. Daniels, very dangerous competitor because he's unpredictable per se. I mean, you know, like you said, he can hit you from any part of that ring with a high risk maneuver or a striking move himself. Nice single leg there by Van Dam and jumps right back down and gets himself a side headlock. Oh. Transition from the single leg. How quickly he jumped over and grabbed the side headlock. Now stuffs Daniels off the side head scissors. But Daniels right back up. And we expected that the strikes from the legs would come from RVD. But in the early going, it's the strikes from Daniels that has Van Dam on the defensive. Well, Daniels saw the opening real quick to catch Van Dam with a quick boot to the stomach, which definitely shut down Van Dam. And now Daniels just. Bringing it right now to the body of uh, Rob Van Dam. Off the float over the quick arm drag. Oh, oh man. Oh! Beautiful arm drag. Look at that. Whoa, 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 for a whoa. scissor. Nice. Usually Van Dam will scissor the legs, but you see him. Oh, my God. Wow. Good luck with that, buddy. Van Dam was able to still hook. Well, show you how strong his legs are. One of his legs was enough to sweep Daniels to his back and then just that. Spinning kick right to the face of Daniels was nasty. Almost like a leg lariat, wasn't it? Just the sure way that was. he extended the leg. I've been kicked by that stuff by <laughs> Van. It's like getting hit by a telephone pole, I'm telling you. Not that most have ever been hit by a telephone pole unless you're a telephone man. You know what I mean? Nice reference. Exactly. Now Van Dam just stomping away at the chest of Daniels. Daniels. Got to try and create some separation and get out of that corner. But RVD right on it. Full court press style. Charges into the corner and the elevation takes him out to the apron. You saw the separation right there by Van Dam. Just moving back on the, on the apron there. But from inside the ring, Daniel's going to try and take over and does a suplex attempt, but it's blocked. Yeah, blocked through the ropes by Rob. That was smart. Uh -oh. Whoa, 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 whoa. High risk. Whoa. That's a dangerous area there. Well, that right to the eyes goes Daniels. Daniels almost got vertical suplexed onto the outside of the ring. The chest of RVD goes right into the steel post. That definitely will shut down Rob Van Dam for a little while. You can see that. I mean, he, like you said, man, sternum first right into the steel post. All that force pushed by Daniels. And Daniel senses that he can take advantage of that. Sneaks up from behind with the blow to the back. This face built this place. Well, Daniels is uh, definitely just gloating around, smiling around. You know, you got a guy like Rob Van Dam as a world-class international superstar. You got him down. You got to stay on him, Daniels. You got to stay on him. Daniels can't help himself. Had to play to the camera. Again, focus here on the chest of RVD. Right into the corner turnbuckles, and now 
The always confident fallen angel Christopher Daniels says that he's going to put RVD away for good. Well, he was kind of mocking Van Dam. Whoa, 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 whoa. Quick pin for two. He was mocking Van Dam, basically saying Van Dam thumbs down. And now uh, he's got that clasp of that reverse gut wrench. The clasp of his hands are right around the chest. The area of the chest, the sternum that hit the steel post on the outside of the ring. So it's smart strategy by Daniels. And that's where his grip is. And Rob's trying to get his hand in between or break the grip of Chris Daniels. That's the key to get out of the hole, break the grip. Not just the pain in the chest for RVD, but also the fact this is going to limit his ability to get that deep breathing, to get that adrenaline going, and to, and to get the offense rolling here. He's trying to take the life away from Van Dam. Van Dam with those short jabbing like elbows, but Daniels realized that Rob was trying to build some momentum and he just stopped him in the middle. Oh, 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 wow. getting stopped. Oh my God. The amazing flexibility of RVD on display. Well, you know, that Daniels completely unaware with that kick. Sure did, and that nice jumping flying fist right there by Rob Van Dam. Swinging those rights is RVD, and then connects again. Spin style in the corner, and oh, the momentum man. from the ropes leads to the clothesline. Look at that. Yeah, the moonsault. Standing moonsault right into the pin for two. Rob thought he could have got, should have had three there. Got, a, got on referee uh, Hebner a little bit. Right there, those tight shoulders in the gut. Uh-oh, watch out. Yeah, monkey flip sends Daniels three quarters of the way across the ring. Oh, man. Another Rob, speed. He's got the metal flush. Oh, oh. oh. rolling thunder. He's gonna get him. Follow pin off the rolling thunder for two before Daniels escapes. This is the point in the match where Van Dam excels. You can just see his offense, and, and Daniels knows that. Van Dam's just starting to really rapid fire maneuvers. Daniels able to stop Rob again. Momentum back in favor of Daniels, but God. again, it's the unpredictability of the leg power and the leg kicks from Van Dam that turns it in his favor. Look how far away Daniels is. Oh my God! Whoop. Wow, that spear! Quick spear! Daniels on top. Farley hook in. No. Daniels. Very surprised he didn't get the win. He's, I'm saying he seems surprised he didn't get the victory there. He really, Daniels really caught Rob with a strong spear. Now can Daniels finish off Van Dam? Right back to the midsection that, oh my God. Open hand, palm thrust, nailed it. Pin, two, and again the frustration from Daniels. I think Daniels got to keep the offense on the midsection, sternum area, rib cage. That's what he's been focusing on. It's worked to this point. Why not? What Red Van Dam right in the face there. Daniels has something in mind as he positions Van Dam up on the top. And again, the advantages of using that open hand, the palm. For Daniels, you, you create the strike, but at the same time, you don't run the risk of, of potentially hurting your own yeah, hand. Yeah, breaking your own hand, and it's a quicker way to hit somebody with a palm Good strike point. as opposed to a fist. Now, what? Look at this here. Those headbutts by Rob. <laughs> so I'd call that a desperation move. It's like, what else am I going to do? I'm trapped up here. Oh, 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 yeah, Van Dam's at home on the ropes. Look at Rob here, Mike. Going to go again, high risk. Here he goes. Got that five star. Both men feeling it. You got to figure Rob's feeling it from uh, the offense. Five star uh, frog splash. Van Dam leans back, gets the pin, and gets the win. Your winner, Rob Van Dam. Well, that was the key, Van Dam. You now he really felt it on his rib cage area because that's the part of the body that Daniels was working on. But Rob. One, two, and on the three, he arched back to a little bit of a bridge and was able to press Daniel's shoulder down to get the victory.
Hard fought battle. Nice way to kick off final resolution, Mike. Let's get down. Guys, what do you say we go back? Let's review what went down in our opening match tonight at Final Resolution. Oh, well, you know, listen, Daniels came into this thing as usual with no confidence problem. And it was kind of back and forth in the early goals. Van Dam looked good, but then David, I'm sorry, Daniels was able to shut him down a little bit when he rammed Rob into the steel uh, post. Whoa. Worked his midsection in rib area there, and right there was that five star. Rob able to catch, watch how he bridges here, and the last one to get that last count, that last three count. Very nice win for Rob Van Dam to kick off our pay-per-view. It's Mike today. it's Taz. We welcome you to Final Resolution, where tonight, Jeff Jarrett versus Jeff Hardy in the confines of the steel cage. Now, we knew that if Jeff Jarrett wins the match tonight, Jeff Hardy gone. He must leave Impact Wrestling. But then yesterday, Sting ruled that if Jeff Hardy wins, not only does Jeff Hardy get a world title shot next month, our Genesis pay-per-view, but also either Jeff or Karen Jarrett will be fired. Well, Mike, listen, man, that's huge stakes right here tonight. So bottom line, this thing, either Jeff Hardy, Jeff Jarrett, or Karen Jarrett, one of them will lose their job and it's a result of what happens tonight, which who knows what's gonna happen, so <laughs> stay tuned. Also tonight, Bobby Roode to defend the World Heavyweight Championship against the challenge of the phenomenal AJ Styles. Iron Man rules. Most falls won within that 30 minutes. You win the match and the world heavyweight title. Well, two former best friends are going to have at it. And it's going to be a marathon, man. It's going to be a true, I feel, a wrestling purist dream match with these two guys going at it in an Iron Man match. I, I tell you what, it's going to be something to see. We could crown a new world champ tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, to get comments on the knockout title match upcoming later tonight at Final Resolution, we're going to send it to Jeremy Borash with Hardcore Country, Mickey James. Well, thank you very much, Mike and Taz. Certainly a loaded lineup here at Final Resolution and the matchup yet to come tonight for the Knockouts Championship. Gail Kim defending against my guest at this time, Mickey James. And Mickey, you are ready for this matchup. The people wanted to see it. They are going to get it tonight here at Final Resolution. Oh, you are absolutely right. I have heard and heard and heard. We want to see Mickey James versus Gail Kim and tonight the people will get exactly what they want. And Gail, there is no hiding behind the skirts of politics and Jezebels, if you will. Because tonight we are gonna take it to the limit. You know, because I was actually very excited to hear that you were coming back to TNA, back to where women's wrestling matters. But no, you have politicked and played hide and seek since you've walked in the door. Well, not tonight, honey, because tonight we are gonna take it to the wall, me and you, all the way. We'll see who is the best knockouts champion. All right, that is later tonight, Mickey James versus Gail Kim. Right now, World Television Championship match next here at Final Resolution. Could not have put it better myself, JB. Knockout still to come, but now it's time for this television championship match at Final Res. The following contest scheduled for one fall is for the television championship. Introducing first from Nashville, Tennessee, Eric Young. You know, it's just an amazing thing here on live TV impact wrestling we go from a beauty like christy hemi <laughs> a beauty like christy hemi to a beast like eric Young. look at this guy you're really not a big fan of the beard are you look at him. it's just it's like well it's christmas time it's like a big christmas tree hanging from his face he's had it for months i know you go near him you can smell it, it smells like he's had it for months he hasn't washed it for months including his gear including that handkerchief around his neck that long ranger thing he just ripped off it's a freaking man. Anybody more entertaining than the Lone Ranger, Eric Young? <laughs> the Lone Ranger, Eric Young. It's Tonto. And his opponent from the New Jersey Shore, accompanied by Robbie T, the television champion, Robbie E. Uh, we're talking about Tonto and Lone Ranger, and it's people under 55 are thinking, who the hell are these guys talking about? Uh, I know this is right here, my man Robbie E right here. Look at him. 
Television champ all fired up, wearing that magic gold green. He's got those crazy sunglasses on. He's got his bouncer. That's Bobby the key. He's got his bouncer with him, Robbie T. Hey, you gotta have a bouncer. Just like at the club. You know how the club you go to, Mike. Right. I, mean, I do live in Las Vegas, Nevada. It's the club capital of the world. Come on. Stop bragging all the time. You're only club guy. Over. Oh, here we go. Right, right now. Oh, I'm about to team the champion right now, buddy. There's the Big Robbie T. He don't talk much, you know. Big Robbie. Big Robbie. The big, big Robbie let's T. Those, let's those physical actions speak for him, right? Your dust. Just like RBD and Daniels, another rematch from our November Turning Point pay-per-view. And it was at that event where the man from Jersey captured the TV title. Nothing, nothing like a little warm-up for the challengers. Oh, that last lockup was a little sloppy oh, by the fan, I gotta tell you. The fans are working that lockup stack. Yeah, Keep your head up there, son. Well, right now, it's like it's, like, it's like it's like it's like a big party out here when this guy's out here. What's going on? So do all those people get a payday now for that? <laughs> <laughs> Royalties on the DVD. <laughs> A big Robbie T, he's like, look, enough, great time's over, get in the ring and face little Robbie. Well, don't let the looks and the actions of Eric Young fool you. He is as goofy as he acts. <laughs> but there's no denying his in-ring ability. Oh, no, no, totally, I, I completely agree with that. I mean, Eric Young, sometimes I wonder if he's playing possum. It looks like one, so I wonder if he's, <laughs> you know, playing possum in there. Because oh no, he's going to pull his pants down again. Does this all the time? We've seen it before. Oh come on, don't, don't don't do that. Come on, leave your britches on. He's always slapping himself. What is that about? Don't say it. He's getting fired up. And right at the bell, here he comes, and that head of steam down the ramp and right on the reigning TV champ. Robbie E. Opportunity here for EY to get back that title. Oh. Those thin press early on. Robbie E. right now, the television champ. He's trying to get out of harm's way. Eric Young is in full effect right here. Whoa. Quick recovery by EY. Going to go shoulder block, but Robbie E. puts on the brakes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What the? Wait a minute. What? Oh! Wow. Man. Bobby E landed splat real hard right on the outside of the ring. Courtesy of the leg strength of Eric whoa, Young, whoa. who goes airborne, flying through the ropes, connecting with the suicide dive. Wow, Eric Young busting out some high flying action right here. Final resolution. Challenger taking it to the champ in the early going opening minutes of this TV title match. Whoa, man. Dodged one bullet, got hit by the other. Yeah, one Robbie missed, one Robbie connected. One was a cannon shot that was missed, and one was the carbine that hit. Confidence level rises in the reigning champ. By the way, uh, by the way, I should say, not we. By the way, uh, Robbie E told me, guys, point out to the world about my trunks, the back of my trunks. Okay. He's got a gorilla on there, because that's what the chick says. Look, 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 yeah, look him. No, that Jersey Shore thing, the gorilla. That's, that's the connection, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's all whole thing, the gorilla. Nothing else? Nope, that's it. Nice factoid. Back to the mount. Reading in the rights again is the champ. And referee, Brian Stifler, trying to lay down the law on Robbie E, but he's, uh, he's so full of himself. Hey, listen, he's proud. He's fist pumping. He's stomping on Eric Young. You know, Robbie's the champ. Whoop, whoop. Champ on top again and gets two. Well, he's feeling his ults right now, Robbie. There's a big bouncer on the outside, big Robbie T. Eric Young, though, the thing is with Eric Young, you gotta be careful with a guy like this, because he can beat you. He can beat he's you so at a damn moment. unpredictable. He sure is, sure is. Robbie getting a little too cocky, maybe. Champ, headed for a high-risk move if he can still quit the fist pumping. Oh. Picks off the ropes and then back on top for the pin, and EY still alive. Eric Young looking a little bit more, eyes a little bit more gazed around than normal. 
I think that's glazed. Glazed, gaze. Still living the Thanksgiving uh, thing going on. Oof! Huh? Side Russian leg sweep in the pin for a two count for the champ again. And Got that control of that massive head right there with that rear chin lock. Is the head really that big or is it just because he's got the beard that it, uh, it has the appearance? It, big it, noggin. Eric Young's head right. is that big. He's got the head the size of a small prop plane engine. Okay, let's get that fact out there. Hey. All right. Hey. You're, you're two for two. Thank you. I've done this before. I'm highly entertaining. Oh! Look at that rear elbow right there. Now, another quick pin attempt and another two count. But we have seen a series of near falls for the champion Robbie E in this title match. And again, back to the neutralizing offense here, just keeping EY down, keeping him grounded. This type of hold, too, will wear you down. It's pulling the air out of your body. You get a choke out victory. He's got some kind of an earpiece What's in the there. Story on that. That's his bouncer deal, right? It's like a CIA thing going on there, right? It's like the FBI they... making sure that, that you get to the front of the line. But who's that? Who's the uh, the IFB? That's the thing in here for those non-TV folks. Who's that connected to? That's your third one. <laughs> Did you get the information on that? Yeah, I didn't think so. That's, what'd you say? Yeah. yeah. Challenger back up to the base. Back up to his feet, gonna use the elbows for the midsection, but then gets cut off with the blow to the back by Robbie E and EY, eats the turnbuckle. This is all Robbie E right now, television champ. He is in complete control. Eric Young, pounded on. Taking a little, a little time there. Whoop. Confident champ. Oh, Gets man. taken down by Eric. And Eric Young has been on the verge of several comebacks in the past few minutes. This may be the one where he really gets things rolling. You see the crazed look in the eyes of Eric Young. That's natural. Yeah, you're not kidding. Oh, my wow. God. What a clothesline there. Discus style with the clothesline. Snap of the slam as he plants him dead center, middle of the ring. And heads to the top. Long oh, no. this elbow connects. Eric hooks the leg, gets two. I mean, that was a huge, huge elbow off the top rope by Eric Young. Got to tip your cap to Robbie E for kicking out of that. That was impressive. Another high-risk opportunity for whoa, Eric. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, my God. Zero reward this time. Pulled down off the top him, that's by it. Robbie. No. Challenger still alive. You see how bad Eric Young wants to win this match and become the television champ. Once again, EY looking to regain the TV gold. Oh, yeah. Yep, big Robbie T in a conference with the referee. Conference is screaming at the referee Stifler. Oh! Both men go for the clothesline, and both Eric Young and Robbie E connect. A little bit of bouncers getting involved. Not kidding, getting involved. About to rip off that head of Eric Young. What is he going to do here? Big Robbie T. Oh my God, look at this, Mike. But well, lifting Eric up into the air, like almost like in a variation of a choke, you can see. Strong as this guy. I think he got. Oh, oh what the? Oh, boy. Sidestepping Robbie E. Oh, no. Eric Young. Are you kidding me? <laughs> what the hell is he doing here? How impressive is this? The power oh. strength of five men. Signs of Ted Orsini right there. <laughs> oh! Drop kick sends Robbie T to the floor. Now you can concentrate on Robbie E. Oh. Oh. Eric got caught unaware. Double knees, follow pin, leg hooked in the three count. Your winner, Robbie E. Better get out of Dodge while you can, Mr. Television Champion. That thing could have went the other way real quick, but 
Congrats to the champ for retaining his title. Eric Young, hell of an effort out here. Came so close to EY, but not close enough. Celebration for the reigning TV champ. Robbie E gets the win. We're going to send it to JB with the tag team challengers tonight. Devon and the Pope. Coming up next here at Final Resolution, the World Tag Team Championship on the line. My guess at this time, the Pope and Devon challenge the World Tag Team Champions. Devon, I got to ask you, you've been to the mountaintop in the tag team division 23 times in your career, but never before with this man. There seems to be some trust issues amongst the two of you. Will that play a factor in tonight's matchup? Borash, there's never really been a trust issue with the Pope and myself. The only issue that I have ever had was the influence that he has on my boys. Now you see, tonight is not the night. We can save that, my brother, for another night. Tonight is about those TNA Tag Team Championship. Tonight, it's about us being on our A-game. And Pope, tonight, it's about us celebrating, becoming the new Tag Team Champions. Oh, my brother! Oh, testify! You know, uh, <laughs> this guy's talking about all this trouble on the home front. You know, it's really not about that. Uh, I don't know. I can't help the fact that Devon kids look up to me as a father that they never had. I mean, Pope got those type of parenting skills. You understand what I'm saying? Hell, Pope is a father to many around this globe. You understand what I'm saying? But tonight, as he said, it's not about that drama. Tonight, it's about the gold, Daddy. It's about the bling. And everybody knows when it comes down to that, Pope is all in. So, uh, BJ, JB, don't correct me. Pope has spoken. Title match number two tonight at Final Resolution. Tag Team Championship at stake. Let's break it down. Let's preview with the taglines. When Sting convinced rivals Matt Morgan and Crimson to join forces, the Blueprint and the undefeated one became world tag champions in their first match as a team. Recently, Impact Wrestling, the Pope and Devon, they defeated Inc. Inc. in Mexican America to become number one contenders to the new champs. Just heard about this. Pope and Devon, they've excelled between the ropes, but questions remain about their ability to put aside those differences, mentally be on the same page, differences yeah, even transferred to Devon's sons, who sided with the Pope. Can the challengers get it together? The following contest scheduled for one fall is for the Tag Team Championship. Introducing first the team of Devon and the Pope, D'Angelo De Niro. Here come the challengers, and you know, they can talk about those trust issues not being a problem. They talk about being on their A game, and I guess there is that, that one element of tag team wrestling where if you're so good, it can override the fact that you may not like your tag team partner or don't get along with it. Hey, most, uh, most tag teams uh, don't get along. I mean, I've had many tag team partners. They've all hated me. Nobody uh, gets along with you. Well, that's another story. That's true. But yeah, there's Devon's sons right there, Terrence and Terrell, giving their dad a support and hug. But uh, you know what? A lot of tag teams don't get along. But you know, in between the ropes is where it matters. I got a funny feeling that Devon and the Pope, but I would assume they'll work as a cohesive unit in this opportunity to post the tag team titles right now. Not the Pope. Terrence and Terrell looking up to the father they never had. Well, that's Pope. You know, Pope kind of talked earlier about delusional people, but you know, Pope's more delusional sometimes. And their opponents, the tag team champions, Crimson and the Blueprint, Matt Morgan. These are two big young guns right here. Big time athletes put together by the man in charge of Impact Wrestling, Sting. The former rivals have proven that 
Again, you don't necessarily need to get along. I know that they have mutual respect. That's been pretty obvious. But these rivals put together, first time out of the barrel, they win the World Tag Team titles. That's big. Well, and again, I mean, that, that you pointed out about Sting, Sting realizing there was some, some kind of a connection or magic between Crimson and Morgan. So he put them together, and you're right, who would have thought that they become champs? But I think these two, the tag team champions, Matt Morgan and Crimson, they like to compete and outdo each other, which makes them a great team. Hence, those titles are theirs. For now, well, that might change right here tonight. You can see Devon, he's got a different type of mindset, Devon, than the Pope. Devon is a very intense competitor, has been that way for years. Very, very intense. With Pope, he's more of a laid back, cool type of competitor. Pope will kind of make you make a mistake first. He'll lay back, play defense. Who had Devon, he's all offense coming right at you. You talked about the competitive nature of both Matt Morgan and Crimson. I think back to the matchup that they had against each other last month at our Turning Point pay-per-view. And that was all about physicality. And they seemed to love it when their opponent got even more brutal and more physical. And they both just fed off of that, had a tremendous matchup, and that actually led to them becoming a team. Well, that's why I think it's... You know, it might be a, a little bit of an uphill battle for the Pope and Devon to capture the tag team titles here, in my opinion. But you have someone like Devon in Pope's corner as a partner who has it's well documented how well versed and multi-time tag team champs who are part of a, one of the greatest tag teams True. of all time, Team 3D. Yeah, 23 time world tag team Ooh. champions. I think that makes you a tag team specialist and nice recovery and nice counter there by the Pope. Saw the familiar offense of Crimson that was reversed on him. Well, that kick, no effect to Crimson. Crimson with a strong knee to the uh, abdomen right there of the Pope. Ah! Talk about intensity. Crimson's all about intensity. Off the shoulder blocks in the corner. Going to try and fire the Pope diagonally across. Quick reversal out of the corner by the Pope leads to a near fall, but Crimson right back up to his feet and the shoulder block on, takes the Pope on. right off of his feet. Yeah, well now, oh, looks like the uh, the largest man in this contest, as if someone could be bigger than Crimson. If anyone is, it's this guy right here, Matt Morgan. Right at that seven foot mark. Yeah, he's even taller than me. 300 pounds. Well, that's not Devon. He wants some of Matt Morgan. You know what I'm saying about Devon with that intensity? He's, he's been like that for years, man. He's Devon's always fired up. He goes into everything face first, full tilt. He's careful. Morgan's an intelligent competitor in there. Full speed ahead. Ask questions later. That's the offensive style of of Devon, but it stopped. A series of headbutts by the blueprint, but Devon right back on him again. And tell you what, Matt Morgan's tough to outpower, but if anybody can, it might be Devon. Devon's in great shape. I mean, he's cut a lot of weight. He's just put on more and more muscle. One, one, one quick shoulder block, quick pin, and barely a one count. Well, I See gotta how? agree with you. We, we've never seen him, I don't think, his entire wrestling career in, in this good of a shape. Well, oh my God, what a clothesline right there by Matt Morgan. I was about to say the quickness difference, the speed that Devon's able to utilize, but Matt Morgan just stopped Devon in his tracks. Yeah, physicality, gonna stop speed when you have a clothesline like Matt Morgan does. Turns things over to his tag team champion partner, exposes the ribs of Devon, and Pope tagged himself in here. I don't, uh, I'm be known, so I was gonna say to Crimson. I think it was a good move, though, by the Pope. I do, too, one for German suplex. It's a big man to throw. We'll wear him down, that, that'll do it. That will do it, and it does the trick, and not satisfied, apparently, with just one suplex, or at least he's going to keep that grip. Back to the well a second time, but it's blocked. Well, when Pope seemed like he tried to do that, it was used too much arms. Got to use your hips on a throw like that. Look at that cradle, nice cradle. You can't suplex someone using your arms. You got to use your hips. Otherwise, you're going to exhaust yourself. You're not going to peel off more than one throw. Asking someone who knows everything about suplexes, the size differential, does that make it more difficult oh, for the Pope? It helps. It helps the Pope because his hips are underneath Crimson's hips. 
Crispo actually being shorter than Crimson helps, but that doesn't help. Oh, oh my God! Great analysis by Taz as the explosive offense out of the corner by Crimson has turned this match in the favor of the champs. It's all about turning. Crimson just turned Pope inside out. Man, that was insane. Did you see that? Holy cow. That's why Crimson's still undefeated as a singles competitor. Good quick tags by the champs in this match, always keeping that fresh man in, and at the same time, they've cut off the ring. They've got the Pope exactly where they want him. Rapid fire elbows by Mo What's this now? It looks like they're doing a double team maneuver. Wow. Not really double team, but team work. Nice exploder suplex. Could lead to the pin. Here we go. Come on, Pope. Pope's got to try to get Devon in this contest here. Tag team specialist extending the hand in. Devon dying to get into the battle. <laughs> Wisely, Crimson pulls the Pope back out towards the middle of the ring to ensure that there's no tag from Devon. You know, that's what Pope wants to do. Try to get to a vertical base. He's trying to, he was gonna, you can see he was gonna start to throw some elbow to create some separation, but smart by Crimson to tag in Matt Morgan right away. Lord knows what Morgan's gonna do here. Gonna go oh to the God. power game. Oh my God. Patented yeah. fall away slam by the blueprint. Is this gonna be enough? On top for two and wow, Devon flying across the ring to break it up. He had to. Otherwise, that tag team championship opportunity, meaning they being Devon and the Pope, would have been gone. Oh, oh side slam, plants him straight down. Near leg well, hooked for two. You know, Mike, by an average man, a side slam's about, what, a three-foot drop? Right. For Matt Morgan, it's like a <laughs> six-foot drop. He's got you under his armpit like that, which can't be fun. And then it just drives you down so high up. Look at the power of Morgan. Good lord, he's an animal. <laughs> he's an animal. Pope able to slide back down and out of nowhere catches Morgan with a DDT. Well, both men are flat down on their backs. Devon knows he needs to get in this match if him and his partner got a chance to, to maybe become tag team champs. This is where being so tall for Morgan helps. He's just got to reach across. His arms are so long, as are Crimson's. Good just point. Him. Pope's close. Pope got it. And both Devon and Crimson now legal. Wow, wow. Man, that's big time power right there. That that's, an, shoulder. that's an A game shoulder block, isn't it? And how about that in the corner? Devon is just moving like a cat. Clothesline, cover, and two before Crimson escapes and Blueprint knocked down to the floor. Whoa, 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 whoa. Bam, look at that. Wow, straight down with the neck breaker. I have never seen Devon move this quick his whole career. I mean, this, from a physical standpoint, his quickness is... Cardio level, no, far way up. Diving, headbutt off the top. Could have new champs. Here's two. Oh, man. Morgan saving his title. Look at a vicious beatdown by Matt Morgan. Referee Earl Hebner trying to maintain order here. Champ's going to go double team on Devon. Wow. Went for the clothesline, but no impact. Well, yeah, good try. Oh, that doesn't work. That it, it, Pope. Where's Polk? Try to oh, I guess Devon's gonna go solo here. Who's Pope? There's Pope. He's on the outside, he's grabbing Morgan. Meanwhile, in the ring, power game of Devon on Crimson. Might be it! Oh! Woo. Don't get much closer than that, do you? You are not kidding. That close to New World Tag Team Champions. And the challenge is still in the driver's seat. Now look at Pope here. Pope headed up high risk up on top. Meanwhile, Whoa. 
Devon slams Crimson straight down, sets the table for the post top rope elbow. Devon the cover. Here's one, two, and again it's Morgan in for the save. Oh, good teamwork because Pope hit that strong elbow from the top where Devon was still a legal man. Oh my God, Pope wow. gone. Devon is still a legal man. Devon is about to get. Oh, I was going to say choke slam. And then both Devon and Morgan connect with clothes. Oh my God! Oh my God! Double choke slam from the champs. Crimson, the legal man, covers, and they keep the title. Your winners, Crimson and Matt Morgan. It was a hell of an effort right there by the challengers. Devon in the pole. I mean, uh, I, I don't know. I mean, they weren't cooking. Too well, in my opinion, meaning Pope and Devon. But the champ stepped the click. Retaining those tag team titles an impressive victory by Crimson and Morgan. Very impressive fashion. Look at this. Pope's not even uh, hanging out with Devon's sons instead of uh, going to check out his partner. We just got women almost to the mat. It's kind of cold, right? Yeah, challengers, well, they answered the question that we had at the top of this match, if they could get it together, and they did not. And questions still remain about this relationship with Devon Suns. Wow, it almost seems like Terrence and Terrell are, it seems like they're kind of, just my opinion, seems like they're a little disappointed in it, Dad. Ladies and gentlemen, in anticipation of our World Heavyweight Championship match later tonight, we send it to JB with the challenger, AJ Styles. Thank you very much, Mike Tanay, the phenomenal one backstage in his locker room. Ladies and gentlemen, it all happens tonight. 30-minute Ironman matchup. My guest at this time, AJ Styles, challenges the champion, Bobby Roode. And AJ, I have to ask you, rumor has it, you are going into this main event match tonight at final resolution at nowhere near 100%. You know what, JB? You're right. I'm not 100%. I'm 200%. Have you ever known me to be out because of injury? Never. No, no. I'm willing and able. You see, Bobby Roode, everything that you've done to me, everything you've done to Fortune, well, it's all coming out. 30 minutes of it with these right here. I'm going to beat the piss out of you for 30 minutes. You see, you were able to single-handedly destroy this, but you'll never destroy this, the phenomenal one, AJ Styles. All right, it is yet to come tonight, your main event, 30-minute Ironman match for the World Heavyweight Championship. And up next, the X Division title is on the line here at Final Resolution. I gotta tell you, I don't know about that 200%. I mean, I appreciate the, the toughness right there with AJ, but I don't know about that. We'll find out about that later tonight at Final Resolution. We keep the title theme going, because up next, X Division Championship match. Here's the X Factors. X Division Champion Austin Aries, Kid Cash. They had a plan to outnumber their opposition. No honor among thieves. It led to the two splitting last month at Turning Point. Kid Cash been among the elite of the X Division's rebranding and rebirth. Tonight, his night to return to the top. While Cash is a former champion, he's not held the title since 2003. My broadcast partner, Taz, he labeled Cash and Aries as Eagle Maniacs, and he was dead on. Both champ and challenger, high opinion of their abilities, and rightly so. Tonight, we'll find out who rules the X Division. The following contest scheduled for one fall is for the X Division Championship. Introducing first from Nashville, Tennessee, Kid Cash! Don't think you're gonna get a much more confident challenger in any title situation than this man, Kid Cash. Well, Kid Cash, he is off. Uh... This is one word to describe this man that's rugged. He is a rugged competitor. He's vicious, he's violent, there's no remorse. He is, he, he, listen, he's been around the world. He knows what he's doing there. Former exhibition champ, as you pointed out. Both of these guys, champion challenge, have a lot in common. 
and his opponent from Minneapolis, Minnesota, the X Division champion, Austin Aries. Yeah, you pointed it out. They do have a lot in common. Aries and Cash. Well, whenever you wear a cape on worldwide TV, live and in Technicolor, you better be tough as you know what. <laughs> a double calls himself just simply the greatest man who ever lived. Yeah, simple. But he's even exceeded his own expectations, and he can't even comprehend that. Luma has it. He drinks uh, Dos Equis. <laughs> At least you get it now. That's tremendous. Oh, well, there's the X Division champion. The challenger right there. Kid Cash, not too impressed. That did deserve a free plug. That one was so good. Oh, sometimes I don't like to brag, but you know. You nailed it. That's what it's about right there, the X Division goal. Aries thinks that they should rename the division, the A Double Division. Not a bad idea. It's got a good little ring to it. A Double Division. Well, not really. Love this re emphasis here in TNA and on Impact Wrestling when it comes to the X Division. The rebirth, the rebranding. A little handstand. <laughs> Showing the athleticism, he's well. Basically, that's how that's what Aries does. He gets in your head right away because he's loaded with confidence. But you gotta watch out with Kid Cash. He'll punch you right in the face, basically. He'll knock the confidence right out of you. Sure will. The other aspect that I really like about this rebranding of the X Division is that weight limit at 225. Oh yeah, absolutely. I know I interrupted you were trying to say that, but yeah, I totally agree with Not you the on first that. time. <laughs> I totally agree with the weight limit deal. I agree with it. I like it. Let's move on. Thank you. See right there, Aries. Just, he's not going to let Kid Cash wrestle his pace in this match. He wrestles his own pace. Dictate. You want to take control. As a challenger, you don't want him to take that control, obviously. Yep. Cash has a physical enough style to dictate the pace himself. <laughs> you don't want to start exchanging chops with Kid Cash. That's not. <laughs> Ex Jesse Sorensen about that. <laughs> I think he's still got a swelt up areola. I take over with the hip toss, followed by the arm drag. Cash going back to the wrestling basics. Ooh. And then, of course, the basic wrestling move of poking your opponent right in the eyes. Hey, it's effective. Nothing wrong with that nice side headlock takedown by Aries, but beautiful head scissor. Look at that. That by Austin Aries. Combination headstand yeah. directly into the drop kick and then the pin for two. I'll tell you, you people at home, it's so hard to explain how difficult from a physical standpoint it is to do what Austin Aries just did. And to do it so flawlessly. You are not kidding. That was nuts. Right now, Kid Cash trying to get out of that side headlock by Aries. This. Both guys trying to rip each other's ears off. I'm not, not surprised by that. Double attempt at the cauliflower ear. Ooh, leapfrog. Yeah. Quickly over with the leapfrog. Connects with the kick. But Cash is able to reverse and shoot Harry's off and another that shot, chop. Chop was right across the throat. That wasn't really in the chest. That was nasty. God, I think Aries might be a little bit out on his feet here. Nasty clothesline and a nastier elbow drop leads to a two count. Good way to break a guy's shoulder when his arms are above his head, laying on the mat, and you drop an elbow on him. It's a good way to break a guy's shoulder, so that, uh, that was ugly. But Ar I'm sorry, Kid Cash, he don't do stuff pretty. It's effective as hell, though. Quick reversal. You can by see, Aries whoa, whoa, whoa. is re now reversed by Cash, but turned around by Aries again. Wow. A lot of near force here. He's got another one. Got him stacked. He's he got may get it right He's here. Got Boy, that was a That's smart move. move. Yeah, you got, got, you got a guy stacked on his neck like that. Very easy to get a win on him. And good flexibility uh, for Austin Aries to scoot out of that. You can see Kid Cash, how, how angry he's got to be at, uh, at Aries, because Aries took advantage of him, right? Played him in that three-way match. Turning point with Jesse Sorensen, the one that we referenced earlier. Yeah, I know, I'm referencing again, so what? I like it, it. So I'm doing it too. Go back to it. I'll go back and forth all night. Look at this now. Austin Aries, boom! Oh, misses the 
fist drop. Yeah, jumping fist doesn't connect, and Cash right back on him. That connects. No doubt about that. The physicality of the clotheslines and the slaps from Cash. I don't remember the last time we've seen here on Impact Wrestling in Aries, uh, this much in harm's way or in dire straits, to say the least, from someone as physical as Cash. You would almost expect that, though, when, it, when we hear about this match. And Cash that time with a wild swing, and instead of connecting with Aries, his hand went right into the steel post. And a lot of times he's oh, clear, clearing things out. So Calval holding on to the X Division Championship belt that is going to be introduced here by Aries. Oh, Quick oh, roll up by Cash. Referee hey, counts. Barely one. Sees Cash was using the ropes for leverage. Nope. Quick roll up now by Aries. And again. <laughs> I told you these guys got a lot of time, right? He's got to top him, doesn't he? You can use the one foot on the bottom rope, I'll use two on the top. Got him back again in the eyes. Well, neither of these men are, they have no problem taking a shortcut to win a match, which I feel is a good thing. Oh my God, nice. Slingshot over the top. Two. And crashing down onto Aries, I think he landed right on the shoulder that you talked about earlier. That, yeah, he sure did, and you see right there, Kid Cash broke the count real quick. Just throwing his head under the ropes was enough to break the count. That chop was... Ooh, that was nasty. Echoes throughout the arena. Sort of a back mule kick by Aries. And again, tosses Cash out to the floor. Aries got him in his yeah, sights. Watch Aries, yeah, watch Aries, Mike. Wow. God. How impressive was that? Full speed ahead with the dive. Get a little water break. Let's take another look at this. Watch this. Check oh. out the oh, check out the impact. He went from the second and through the second and bottom rope. Look at that. Most guys go through the top and second rope. Very impressive right there by Austin Aries. Improv on the fly by the champ, and now gonna go neck breaker and drops down and the back of the head and neck of Cash off the steel cable. Pin, leg hook, and no. Smart by referee Brian Hammond. He didn't rush the count because he realized the right shoulder of Kid Cash was still up. Shoulders got to be, both shoulders have got to be down on the mat. We were breaking down referees. It's unbelievable. Doing it all. They do without you. They'll probably not have a headache if they show. That's another story. But right now, these men are slugging it out here. Changing. Cash momentarily gets the bell of it before he's cut off by Aries. Elevates him up, drops nice, him across nice. the knees. Takes him in the corner for two. He realized after that gut bust that he was in tight for a little roll to roll Kid Cash into a cradle was Austin Aries, and it was very well done. A little subtle thing like that is which makes Aries the champion. Front slam. Looks like he's gonna set up for the pendulum elbow. Oh, he's telegraphing this thing, isn't he? Yeah, don't waste too much time here. Double A, uh A double. A double, right? Oof. That's my other buddy, double A. In. Whoa, wait. Skids the boots across the face and eyes of Cash. And Aries right back on the challenger. Kid Cash, a couple of nice quick uppercut. Although this double lung hook, nice reversal by Austin Aries. X Division champs in control. Could be a brain buster attempt that we've seen a couple of times by Aries. Float over by Cash instead. Oh! God. He hit him. See that Cash hit him while he was going down. Hit and him again. I don't see that much. You hit a guy, he's going down, and Cash hit him again. I love it. <laughs> you can see the physical toll that both these men are putting, putting their bodies throughout here. I mean, most X Division matches are. You know, a lot of extra match, I should say, a little bit more finesse. True. Maneuvers uh, where this is more of a real physical contest. Look at that athleticism by Cash. Able to recover. Oh oh Missed the move out of the corner and then just oh. overpowers Aries. Nothing fancy about slamming a Could guy to the man. He got too. him. He got him. God, that was insane.
Cash insisting that he had the three oh count. I don't know how Cash didn't get the victory on that. Bitch, watch the impact. Look at this, watch this. Wow. Oh, holy smokes. Quick back body drop by Aries. Stops whatever move Cash was going to attempt. Champ trying to get it together and clear the cobwebs as he goes to the top. I'm not sure that's a good idea. Yeah, I, don't, I don't think that Aries even know where the hell he's at, man. Might have been better to stay grounded at that point. And landed on his jam bag there right there, but now... The region? Yes. Now, Kid Cash saying he wants to go off for something. Wave to somebody in the audience. Oh! oh. Thinking man's move right there. Yeah, by Aries just jumping right at the ropes. That's what Aries does well, even though when he's in pain and has, he's having problems in there physically, he's always thinking Austin Aries. Maybe going for a superplex, Mike. Cash fights it off. Exposed rib cage. And to the eyes. Of Aries was an open oh, well, invitation. Well, this, Mike. What the hell are these guys doing here? Oh, this is dangerous. Cash, this is dangerous. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, God. I didn't what the hell was that? I, it looked like Cash was going to go for a power bomb off the top rope. And I think almost like a hurricane run in mid move. Let's take a look and see if that's accurate. Well, we caught the tail end of the move right there. We, yeah, what here it is. He's going for a power bomb. True. And then he did. He snapped off the hurricane run to answer. Wow. Ah. Very innovative move ah, was by nuts. Aries. And we talked earlier. The crowd here, they're, they're really not in favor of either guy. They really don't like either Kid Cash or Austin Aries, but even they appreciated that incredible high-risk move off the top. Ooh. You can see both these men are just leaving it all in the ring out here for the Covenant X Division Championship, I should say, championship. I'm getting caught up in a moment watching these guys just pound on each other, Mike. Both. Aries and Cash just beating the hell out of each other. Another attempt here, gonna go double under Hooker. Looks like that's what he wants to do, meaning Kid Cash. He's got it locked. Nice block. How Stop. about, the, how about the, the block? Using the stomp of the foot Ooh. to deny oh. Cash, and then Aries flips him directly overhead onto his back. First, he gives him a knee breaker across his knee, and then. His arches back does Austin Aries, the exhibition champion. Chucks. Kid Cash. Several occasions we've seen Cash go for what appears to be a moneymaker. We saw the brainbuster attempt earlier by Aries. Neither man able to connect oh, with their patented oh. finishing moves. And that time the boot of Cash right in the face of the champ. Again, double on the hook. And he's another counter. Well, I should say escape. Oh, by Austin Aries, and again, Aries moves out of the way and crashes and burns. Does the challenge. Champion putting something across his, his knuckles, maybe brass nuts, possibly, or, taped up. Or a cash <laughs> Look at this. The cash has got some kind of a foreign object. Well, we knew that both of these guys, they would oh. go to any length. To win the championship, Aries hands the belt to Cash. Cash gets caught with his hand in the cookie jar. Cash in the booth. There's no oh. Rain Buster down. Champ on top. Aries covers and double A still the champ. Your winner, Austin Aries. In genius like fashion, Austin Aries retains the exhibition goal. Highway robbery without a shotgun, okay, <laughs> because that's what he did here. Yeah, Aries just put the title belt in Kid Cash's hand as a, as a distraction for the ref to yank it like a smoking gun that wasn't smoking out of the hands of we, Kid Cash. We, we referenced it. He was a thinking man's wrestler, and he may have outthought him on that one. A-double does it. Still, the X Division champ. As we go back and review our X Division title matchup. Well, we knew it would be very physical between these two men. We both these guys just uh, you know, cheating each other. Every way they go left and right got real physical. Uh, matchup just got very physical. Both guys are physical competitors. Look at this here. That was insane. I don't know how Aries did to lose his title right there. This was nuts. So it was a very yeah. physical contest. Referee Brian Hemman back turned for a moment. Aries was able to capitalize a little bit of Tom Fullery shenanigans.
retaining his exhibition gold is Austin Aries. <laughs> and we saw that post-match look on the face of Kid Cash. It was almost, if in, even in defeat, how much he respected the champ, Austin Aries. Up next, final resolution, the knockouts title match. Time to determine a number one contender for the new champion, Gail Kim. Ten knockouts to compete in this gauntlet matchup. You talk about against all odds, Mickey James. Fights through the numbers and is victorious. Mickey James, you're headed to final resolution. And you get that title shot against Gail Kim. There's one true champion in this ring right now, and that's Gail. That is why she sits up on her perch and looks down at all of you. Tonight, we are going to have our first ever lingerie ball. I actually thought for one second that you were gonna come in here and try to make a positive impact on the knockouts division instead of trying to take it back 10 years. Number one contender to Gail Kim snaps the neck of Gail Kim's tag team partner, Madison Rain. Here's the follow DDT by Velvet Sky and the win. I've got a surprise for you. I've got a street fight with Mickey James. And my deal with you is you hurt her in that match and you become the number one contender for the Knockouts title. Knockouts Vice President Karen Jarrett reinstates ODB to the Impact Wrestling roster, then gives her marching orders for tonight. Take out Mickey James. ODB keeps looking at that steel chair. Oh! Perfectly placed kick, chair in the face, Mickey on top for the three count. Madison, you are my ace in the hole. I need you to go get in that ring with Mickey James and tear her apart. Well, if, if you want someone to put somebody out in the world of the knockouts, that's a really good pick. You know, it's an opportunity for her to help Gail retain her knockouts title this Sunday against me. Doubles are over with the boot to the midsection and jumping DDT. What a spike that was this Sunday. Final resolution, Gail Kim one-on-one -on -one against Mickey James for the knockout title. Hardcore country, Mickey James challenges Gail Kim for the knockout championship. Hardcore country! The following contest scheduled for one fall is for the knockout championship. Introducing first from Richmond, Virginia, Mickey James! What's up? If we're going to watch that video package twice, at least it included the knockout car wash highlights. <laughs> you got to feel, stay positive. I'm all with you, buddy. I'm all with you. Mickey James right now. I was talking to her earlier today, and uh, she told me how fired up she is. I can see it right in her eyes. She is ready to rock and roll with this opportunity. And her opponent from Toronto, Canada, one half of the knockout tag team champions and the knockout champion, Gail Kim. Well, when Gail Kim returned to Impact Wrestling, she was instantly chosen by Karen Jarrett as her example to the other competitors in this division. And quite honestly, Gail Kim is the hand-picked favorite of the Knockouts Vice President, Karen Jarrett. And I cannot argue with the Knockouts Vice President, Karen Jarrett. Who else would you want? Look, I mean, look at Gail Kim. She looks amazing. True. She is one half of the Knockout Tag Team Champs. Now with she's you. the Knockout Champ. I mean, uh, she's but not just I can, she's an amazing competitor. Do you think she would have both of those titles if it wasn't for the influence of Karen Jarrett? No, she made the most of her opportunity. Let's be honest now, Mike. Just wanted to throw it out there. Don't have to get hot. Not hot. Not hot. But right now, I think uh, these ladies look pretty hot. There it is, right there. Knock out title by referee Stiffler. That's a boat. <laughs> oh, you're on fire tonight. I wrote. Right, here we go. Quickness right there by Mickey, able to get out of the way and book herself a real chin lock. I think to me the the story of this match is that the longer this match goes, 
Is hardcore country Mickey James going to be able to keep things together? We've seen the past several weeks on Impact Wrestling. It starts off with the gauntlet match, which she wins. At that point, we all thought that she earned the right to challenge for the knockouts title, but then Karen Jarrett not satisfied. After that gauntlet win, Mickey has to overcome ODB in that physical street fight. Saw the highlights from that. Yep. Then Madison Rain this past Thursday on Impact Wrestling. And tonight we're going to find out if Karen Jarrett's plan to wear down. Mickey James pays off so far, so good for the challenger. Here we go. Well, you got to be careful with someone like Mickey James. I think Gail Kim, she won't act it, but she respects Mickey James. I think most uh, you know, women competitors do. Mickey's a multi time women's champion and well traveled all over the world. You cannot take Mickey lightly. Say the same thing for Gail Kim. Absolutely, there's no doubt about that, and that which makes you know, this such an intriguing matchup for the knockouts title. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Great credentials, great resume for both of these competitors. Quick snap mare by Mickey, who follows basement style drop kick right into the face of Gail. Look at the quickness right there by Gail Kim. Oh, how impressive was that? She's an athlete. Gonna try kidding. and take Mickey over, but Ooh. blocked by Mickey James in the corner. Oh, God. fights back with an elbow that was right on target. Oh, oh God. My. Oh, my God. That was nasty. Black. Oh, that was bad, man. Whew. Look at Mickey. She looks like she fell face first out of a building. Oh my god, she's not even moving. Slow to recover is the challenger. Meanwhile, champion senses that she's got Mickey in a position now where she can take the offense right to her. Look at Gal Kim just talking trash. Yeah, not satisfied with just the physical beating. Trying to get inside her head as well. Close line and a near fall for the champ. You know, Kim realized that she's on top of the proverbial mountain in the world of the knockouts, and she knows while you're up there, these other ladies are scratching and clawing to get at your championship. So you got to be vicious. You got to be violent when you're a champion. You work your tail off to get it. Once you get it, you want to hold on to it. And then you factor in the political favors of the knockouts vice president, Karen Jarrett, and Gail Kim's in a pretty good position. Hit scissors take off into a pin. Unique offense there. Very nicely done by Mickey James. That was an awesome counter. Almost caught a quick win on the champ. But the recovery by Gail Kim leads to a pinfall attempt for the champ. Ooh. Gail just punting. Mickey James and again kicks her right in the midsection. Yeah, Mickey, there's no, there's no quit in Mickey James. She's not going to stop. Look at that. Look at this submission right here on the knee of Mickey James. Scale Kim. Kim, she is just so technically sound. The way she does things in that ring, and now she's great finding his legs. And it's like an Indian, Indian death lock yeah, very very variation. Yeah. Very impressive. That's a good way to shut down. Look at this, she's really working on the leg. Shut down Mickey James. You know, everybody knows Mickey James, she does an awesome Fez press, you know, which leads into victories for a time in and time out. This will eliminate the ability for Mickey to possibly run and, and nail that Like Fez that press. strategy. Sure. Take out a leg. I mean, that, that works. I and mean, you can see Gail Kim's face right there. She's got that, that, that look in her eye. Of a killer, man. That's that's how a champion I feel needs to be. Two, three, and that's the attitude that Gail Kim has had since returning to Impact Wrestling, and that's why she's the Knockouts Champion. Mickey shot off into the corner. Mickey's in trouble. Oh, look at that! Well, oh, oh my God! Well, I didn't Jeez. anticipate the quickness Whoa. at that point. I don't know if you see what just sort of happened there. She landed. Well, she landed. Her knee really hit that those steel steps. I don't know how her leg isn't split open right now. Yeah, it, looked, it looked like a thigh, the side of a thigh. Bad landing for Gail. That was nasty. She's definitely favoring the leg as she's well brought back in. Oh, man. By Mickey James, who goes right back to the offense. Just to show you how tough these ladies are, these knockouts are on our roster. I mean, really, people don't realize it, you know? It's... Whoa! Look at 
and Mickey Rock. James, series huh? of clotheslines by the challenger. And Mickey's back in charge. Yeah, that's how quick Mickey can turn things around. Face up right right back up to her feet. Mickey James now. She's got the momentum on her side. And she that momentum is cut off immediately by the champ. And now the opening for Gail Kim to take advantage of Mickey perched up on top. Let's see what Gail Kim has in mind. Gail Kim here trying to get herself on the top rope, it looks like. What the hell is this now? Oh, Tried to snap off the Hurricane Ronda, but blocked by Mickey, who goes now whoa, to the whoa, top whoa, whoa, whoa. and connects with the fast press off the top. Got Could it. be another win. The Could split. we have a new champ? Oh. Gail Mickey's still able to kick out while Mickey was in a split. I don't know that she had her great weight positioning at that point because of the way that her legs were split. I don't think she really was pulling on top of Gail. It looked like the split might have would have helped. Jumping DDT is reversed and countered. Dragon screw right there. Leg drag beautifully done by Mickey James. Mickey sizing up Gail and now inviting her back in. And Gail, Gail going for a walk here. I'm oh, surprised. Gail Kim, she's uh, yeah. Takes the knockouts championship, tag team championship, heads Ooh. up the ramp, and Mickey James says, Not tonight, not going to walk out on me. What a knockouts champ is really getting a beat down put on her right now. She hit that, that steel. That, I was gonna post. say that shot into the post could be the difference maker right here. A week in Gail Kim. What, what, what Gail's tag team partner? Madison Rain, yeah. One half of the knockout tag champs, Madison Rain. Gonna try and get involved. And, oh, the eat defeat by Gail as Mickey was trying to come back through the ropes. Gail Kim keeps the gold. Your winner, Gail Kim! In true veteran fashion, very smart by Gail on her pin to take all the limbs of Mickey James and bring them towards her so they weren't underneath the ropes where the pinfall would stop. But you gotta give a nice assist to the partner of Gail Kim. I mean, how important was that momentary distraction oh, by Madison Rain? Very important. Very important. What a physical matchup by these two knockouts, though. Again, Gail Kim still the knockouts champion as we go to Jeremy Borash with James Storm. Thank you very much, Mike and Tad. Certainly a wild night here at Final Resolution. My guest at this time about to step into the ring against the Olympic gold medalist, Kurt Angle. He is the beer drinker, the Tennessee Cowboy, James Storm. JB, what did you just call me, beer? Drinker. Beer. Drinker. Beer. Drink. Exactly, because that's what I am, Kurt Angle. I am a beer drinking, ass kicking machine. So we're going to do it tonight for all these people here in Orlando that came to have fun and raise a little hell. Because tonight, Kurt Angle, let me tell you something I learned a long time ago. Whoever you are in life, no matter how big and bad you think you are, there's always somebody out there bigger and badder that can always knock you down. And tonight, I'm that guy. So everybody that's in the crowd tonight, I want you to get up on your feet and raise hell from the guy up there in that beer drinking t-shirt to the guy in the front row with a birthday hat. Happy birthday, buddy, because tonight, Kurt Angle, I beat you two times in a row. From the bottom of my heart, I have to tell you, Kurt Angle, actually, my heart, I meant from the bottom of my balls. Sorry about your damn luck. Beer! Bobby Roode, now you better explain real quick and why you want to jump me from behind i beat you before do you really think that i would stoop so low don't flatter yourself storm last week wasn't him i saw him the entire time i was looking across my locker room he was sitting right there all the way up until bell time
I'm here to find out who this was that jumped me from behind and gave me a concussion. If I'm gonna attack you, it's not gonna be from behind. Somebody jumped me from behind, gave me a concussion, and now I'm out for a couple weeks. But isn't it funny how since I'm out, you not only get one, but you get two shots at Bobby Roode. Well, I never expected this. You guys are good friends. Last thing you would ever think. You can understand how he could reach that conclusion. He just never saw that, that it would lead to something like that. I guess this is some paranoia now. I mean, I can understand so. What the hell? Kurt Angle. I want you to go home, and I want you to tell your little daughter that I'm the one that gave Daddy the concussion. You drunk? Stupid son of a <laughs> Sorry about your damn luck. We are joined by the cowboy James Storm from his home in Tennessee. Any idea when you're going to be able to return to in-ring competition? Uh, you know, as of today, I, I went to see a specialist, and I I'm not cleared to wrestle, so I'm not really exact on the date when I can come back to, you know, wrestle in the ring. I'll tell you what, James, why don't you come here next week, and let's make this match a final resolution official, doctor's permission or not. How about that, James? You know what, Kurt Angle, I haven't been cleared to wrestle, but well, I will be there next week. Kurt Angle, I will be there next week, and when you look at me in the eyes, you will see that I'm not scared of you, Kurt Angle. I'm not scared of the greatest wrestler in the world. It's damn real. The Olympic gold medalist, Kurt Angle, prepares for war against Cowboy James Storm. He's scheduled for one fall. Introducing first from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Kurt Angle! True definition of bad blood. That's what exists between this man, Kurt Angle, Olympic gold medalist, and his opponent tonight, the Cowboy James Storm. Yeah, I totally agree with that, Mike. I mean, it's, listen, Kurt Angle always in the zone, but tonight I think he's a little bit more focused than normal. This is going to be a battle right here between these two men. You can see it right there. Look at Kurt's eyes. He is locked and loaded. Sorry about your damn luck. And his opponent from Leapers Court, Tennessee, the Cowboy, James Storm! The concussion issues that James Storm suffered at the hands of Kurt Angle have been cleared up. Medically cleared is the Cowboy Team Storm for this matchup against Kurt. Storm says, we are going to raise some hell tonight at final resolution. Yeah, you heard of it. We just, a moment ago, we heard James Storm. He just seems like he can't wait to lock balls with Angle. You know what's eating at Kurt Angle? Who will ever forget that memorable World Heavyweight title match? When James Storm, he caught Kurt Angle flush with the last call super kick yep. and beat him, pinned him. What celebration we had here in the event zone. Remember that? You know, quick, very quick. And I think Kurt felt, not just because of the championship, losing the championship, but he felt humiliated and embarrassed. And that led to the attack by Kurt. We had a mystery for several weeks until it was revealed that Angle was the perpetrator of that locker room attack. Well, I mean, I was talking to Kurt about that, and he felt like it was a fluke. He felt it was a fluke that, that Storm was able to nail him with that kick. I mean, it wasn't really a fluke, though, let's be honest. I mean, the guy won the match. Storm won the match clean and won the title. Look at that. You don't want to start grappling now with Kurt Angle. That's not a good idea, Storm. That's not your style, bro. Don't do that. 
falling right into the trap of Kurt Angle, aren't you, if you yeah. try and out-wrestle the Olympic gold medalist? Yeah, nice reversal right there, sitting out into that hammerlock by James Storm. And that has to frustrate Angle as well. Got to go to the ropes for the break. Well, listen, anybody who knows Kurt Angle, I know him very well and competed with him many times. He is a very com combustible competitor, very emotional competitor. Very proud man. Yeah, he is, but, you know, lately Kurt has kind of been more high strung than normal, and he's just been kind of just wacky in the sense of he just explodes out here, and, you know, uh, you, you never know. I mean, so you're, you're saying that from your experience through the years with Kurt, maybe not as calculating as he usually is. Uh, yeah, kind of, but he's just, he's uh, he's a little bit more dangerous because he's just rely on his technical skill. Now it's just, he's bringing his viciousness. And like I said, combustible is the word I just think of when I think of Kurt right now. And combined with that athletic ability and his obvious, you know, obviously a gold medalist. And I mean, the guy's moniker is he's the greatest wrestler in the world. That's pretty heavy duty and he lives up to it. You know, be, along with that, uh, being combustible on that violent mean streak, that's a bad, bad mix. A head scissor right now on James Storm, does angle. Storm gonna try and escape the head scissors and does, but Kurt right there with the front face lock. Yeah, how quick, and Kurt keeps his hips away from James Storm. And if you're James Storm, man, you don't want to get into this here. You want to try and get into a striking contest of sorts. What's Kurt Angle? Kurt Angle, well, this is where he, he obviously is at his best. Where he thrives. He's got a side headlock, tightly applied, wearing down his opponent, knowing, knowing every little trick, his, his weight distribution, working on the head and neck. Kurt's balance is amazing. His leverage is amazing. And that's what wrestling is about. If you have those two things, balance and leverage, you've got a good chance of being successful. That's why he's among the best ever, and many would say is the best ever. Angle shot off into the ropes, but able to answer with the shoulder block. Here comes Kurt, and Storm catches him. Wow, hit very nice. Over. Excellent by James Storm, followed by an arm drag. Good combination right there, a hip cross and arm drag. James Storm looking good right here, got an arm bar. He's feeling the effects there, moving his neck around a little bit from that, the way Kurt had that uh, side headlock applied. I can definitely tweak your neck a little bit. Yeah, even Angle with a basic move like the side headlock, <laughs> yeah. is, is able to wear down his opponent to the point where Storm's still feeling the effects of it. A minute or so later, cheap shot in the corner by Kurt as he rakes the eyes. You gotta wonder right now, these blows to the head, in my opinion. A guy's coming off a concussion right now in James Storm. That's, that's, uh... We had anticipated the strikes in this match probably coming from Storm, but instead it is Angle who connects, and again with the concussion issues, even though he is medically cleared. See the way Storm hit those ropes, I think he's... Might have been a little woozy there for a moment. Here's the pin attempt Here we go. Here the we Cowboy. Go. Clothesline there. Impact of the clothesline takes Angle all the way out. And Storm going to go out and meet him on the floor. And maybe this is an advantage for James Storm to take it out to the floor and get physical with Kurt. I think so. I definitely think that would be in the wheelhouse of James Storm. You know, to do stuff on the outside here, it's, you're, you're in a better position. To wear down Kurt Angle. Also, that's a great punch right there by James Storm. You see, he's he just broke the count. Got something in mind here. Motions for the crowd around the ringside area to step away. He used that guardrail as a weapon against Kurt. That's what James Storm's about, man. You know, he's a ballroom brawler type fella. That's what he's all about. Again, breaking that count. Oh, that was rough toll. Look at that. God. Surprise move yeah. by Angle catches catches Storm completely off guard. Again, and again, think of the concussion. That's exactly what I'm thinking about. I mean, the man just was cleared to come back to compete. Now, 
Kurt not, not showing any stopping of attacking James Storm, and he realizes that he knows him. He knows he, you know, he gave the guy a concussion. He attacked him, left him a bloody mess in the locker room area, did Kurt Angle to James Storm, and the mystery of sorts of who, who did this to James Storm, and we found out it was Angle. Look at Angle just stepping on the man's skull. A different offense than we expected from Kurt Angle, but very effective nonetheless. Now Kurt wearing him down with a rear chin lock. Storm trying to clear the cobwebs at the same time here. Kurt continues the wear down process. James in a knee. Look at all that weight right there, Mike, of Kurt's body in the back of the head. You know what I mean? Wearing down James Storm. And Storm trying to break that grip. Nobody better than Kurt Angle. When it comes to those little nuances like that. Absolutely. And that's what Kurt's about. Look at that running back elbow just meeting the jaw flush. And how about the impact of Storm's head as he crashes oh down against the mat? Storm's trying to cover up to prevent those. Oh and he blocked the oh first God, couple. Come on. Come on. He may have blocked two of them, but then Kurt, I think, caught him about five or six times. Uh, Kurt Angle knows he's in the catbird seat right here. The man is James Storm is down and out. Again, fresh off of this concussion. Angle just sitting and waiting. Which, now what? You know, I mean. You know, I expected maybe a suplex at that point, but instead. He's wearing him down. Angle's just wearing. I don't, I don't think you have to wear down Storm anymore. I think he's really in a bad way right now as James Storm. This is getting dangerous here. Storm had the quick offensive flurry early on in this match, but quite wow. honestly, for the last several minutes, it has been all Kurt Angle, and the strikes continue. Those elbows oh are vicious. God. This assault is just... I have a little remorse, Kurt. I mean, the guy's coming off of... Uh, 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 a head injury. I mean, you know, it's zero remorse from Angle as he drags Storm back in using his, his hair like a handle. And Storm going to try and get it rolling here with these right hands. Storm throwing a lot, a lot of heart right here. They're able to stop. Angle's able to stop Storm in his tracks. Wear down continues. Storm back to a knee. Boy, that's close to a choke. Yeah, it sure is. And you see Storm trying to get his fingers in between his throat and Kurt's arm. That, that very important separation at this point. It's tough with Kurt. Look at Kurt. All his body weight is resting on the back of the neck. Not resting, I should say, driving on the back of the neck. That's the way he's got his legs Storm. positioned here also. Yeah, it all his weight, trust me, it, the way it's positioned is on the back of the head to wear down and choke the man out. He's done. Just end the match. That's end it two. Already. End it. Wow, that was close. Looks like there's still life in the Tennessee Cowboy. Yeah, but how much? But I mean, uh, what's at stake here? He's I mean, got to get back up to his feet, number one. That's step one. There's not much behind those elbows. He's no. trying. Look at that. Oh, wow. It may do it. Backdrop suplex. Look at his eyes, though, Mike. Look at Storm. Look at him. Dazed and confused. Oh, 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 he can't even. Nice. Wow. Just my view, I mean, referee Earl Hebner might want to consider possibly, I, if this guy can't defend himself, well, well I guess he is. He's <laughs> throwing punches, but I don't know where that came from, though. Not going to count out the Cowboy yet. Exchanging big rights with Kurt Angle. And now... Look at this. Yeah, Storm quickly getting the better of it. Wow. This I spoke too soon. James Storm looking good right now.
Angle gets the elbow up. Comes right in the storm. Oh. Oh. Kurt never saw that one coming. Oh, oh stab him right in the back. Storm on top of the cover oh. and so close. Storm regroups, connects with the right. That one rocked Angle, caught him good. Kurt able to turn it around. Here comes the reversal and... Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, my God. Stop on a dime and catch him with that released overhead belly to belly. Leads to a pin and... Again, great toughness shown by Cowboy James Storm to kick out of that very quick snap overhead belly to belly suplex by Kurt Angle. Storm trying to break the grip of a potential suplex by Angle. Kurt. Oh, no, 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 Gonna work on the leg and the ankle. My God, the ankle lock is in. James Storm is right in the middle of the ring. He's gotta try to get to a rope or something. Kurt's favorite submission move is blocked by the free leg of the Cowboy. Storm from outside, caught him with the kick. This time, Angle on the receiving end to a blow to the head. I, I thought Storm was going to be done and out in the middle of this match. He came back. And I respect that out of James Storm. Oh, God, on the back of the head again, Mike. Impact of that suplex, it's tough to watch, isn't it? And, and Kurt Angle will not stop. He will do repetitive German suplexes there. Everyone is gonna land this guy in the back of his head. Like a wrestling machine, Angle still on and caught him twice with the German. Quick hips right here. Kurt popping those hips and just exploding through the man. This could be enough. Uh, I think this is Rolled definitely over, enough. Leg hook. That's it. Ah, wow. Got to give Storm props for this, th th this fighting attitude that he's displayed. Yeah, but look at him. I mean, look at Storm. He can't because again, as we talked about coming off of this concussion, I mean, the man is—he's shown a lot of flurries of impressive offense, but have to follow up. Float over off that attempt at an angle slam, and now Storm going to take him up. Could be eye of the storm here, Mike. Could be. Could be Whirly Bird time with that eye of the storm. Releases angle. Here we go, here drops we go. down and covers. Not able to put him away. Storm headed outside. Well, Angle recovers, and yeah. now here, here goes Storm headed up to the top. Well, I don't know how wise this I, is. I don't know about this either, Mike. I mean, he was looking wobbly on regular ground. Nevertheless, the ropes. Quickness of Angle up to me oh and belly God. to belly off the ropes. Wow, look at that. They were just, just completely contorting the body of Storm. Kurt on top. He's got him. Here we He's go. got him. Here's two. Oh my God. This guy won't quit. This James Storm just keeps kicking out. Amazing resilience by James Storm in this matchup. And now the straps go down. And that's never a position that you want to be in when you're facing Kurt Angle. Come at the arm drag that time yeah. instead of the angle slam. Yeah, very nice counter. And look at, oh, look for that kick. Last call, super kick that won him the world title is blocked. And Kurt back to the ankle lock. Very hard to get Kurt Angle with the same move twice. Smile on the face he's got him. of Angle. Tells you how confident he is that he's got the submission hold locked in. Look at the ankle of Storm. Storm just, you've got to appreciate your intestinal fortitude, but just call it a day here, man. You're not 100%. Just keep fighting back. Yeah, able to escape the ankle lock again. Oh! Kurt's shoulder first into the post. Opening now for Storm. But can he take advantage?
What the hell is this? Look at Storm's got Kurt like across the second rope. Oh my! Oh! It dropped him down almost like a, a variation, a version of a DDT. We pointed Man. this out in the past. That apron part of the ring. It's so hard. It's just no give. There's no give at all there. And Kurt Angle, I mean, he had multiple surgeries over the years on that neck. He's had spine and, and uh, neck issues, to say the least. Let's take another look at this here. Watch how Kurt's the whiplash motion. Watch his neck. Oh, God. Now, you know what? I don't blame Storm for doing that. Maybe he can't. He's got, he's got to survive out here. The guy's coming off of this concussion. He's got to survive. Angle rolled back in by Storm. Realization just set into the Cowboy. I'm not going to beat him outside the ring. Well, it might be an even playing field right now because both men seem to be not loopy, and there's good reason for that. Whoa, whoa! There's the angle slam. This could do it. Kurt on top. God. I thought that was it. Kurt Angle thought that was it. What does Kurt have to do to beat James Storm? He's hitting with everything in this match. Uh oh, uh oh, look at this. Could even a moonsault be next. Oh. It's an attempt. But Storm was able to slide out of the, the path as Angle crashed down off that moonsault. And I think Kurt got a little desperate with that. It was an uh, impressive show of athleticism, no surprise by Angle, but I think he rushed into that. And obviously James Storm was playing possum. I look at Storm trying to feed off a large crowd here in the impact zone. There it is. Oh, yeah. Last call, super kick connects. Storm covers. Storm wins it. Your winner, the Cowboy, James Storm. I got to tell you, I'm, I'm very surprised. I'm very surprised. But for a large chunk of that match, Cowboy James Storm was in a world of hurt. I don't know how he did it. I, I, I'm going to call out an underdog, uh, underdog, I should say. Upset win. Upset, that's the word I'm looking for. Thank you. An upset win for Cowboy James Storm. Do you agree with that? Have to. Especially when, as you watch this match, you just never got that feeling that, that Storm was going to be able to turn it around on Angle. Instead, right place, right time. Last call, super kick. Just like when he won the World Heavyweight Championship, James Storm victorious. I mean, who knows here? I mean, the, the question is that I have, does James Storm have the number of that man right there, Kurt Angle? That might be the question that's going through the mind of the Olympic gold medalist, judging by the reaction, the facials of Kurt Angle. Well, you definitely could see, Mike, that uh, definitely some space rented in the head of Kurt Angle by that look that Kurt Point. just gave James Storm. Kurt very dejected as we see him walking Still up the ramp. Still as he goes yeah. up the ramp. Yeah. But Tough then, one. What, what a job by Cowboy James Storm in that never say die attitude. Listen, very I, impressive. I thought he was done. I thought Storm, there was several times in that match, you could see that he looked a little loopy out there. Because again, fresh off this concussion, you know, just got medically cleared. You're in there with Kurt Angle who's zoning and attacking the back of your head, the side of your skull, the front of your head. I mean, good strategy by Kurt, a violent strategy, but it didn't work. Taz, let's talk about what's up next tonight here at Final Resolution. Steel Cage being erected in anticipation of Jeff Hardy and Jeff Jarrett. Some very interesting stipulations in this matchup that got even more interesting yesterday with the blockbuster announcement by Sting. Well, yeah, absolutely. I mean, listen, the bottom line is Sting, as we said at the top of the show, Mike, someone is basically going to lose their job here. It's either going to be Jeff Hardy, Jeff Jarrett, or Jeff Jarrett's wife, Karen Jarrett. Right. You know, so uh, that, that's going to happen here. We don't know who. What we knew going into yesterday was that if Jeff Jarrett wins tonight, Jeff Hardy gone. He must leave TNA. He must leave Impact Wrestling. But then Sting ruled yesterday that if Jeff Hardy is victorious in this steel cage match, Jeff Hardy gets the World Heavyweight title shot next month at our Genesis pay-per-view. But not only the World Heavyweight title shot, but either Jeff or Karen Jarrett will be fired. Yeah, I mean, just imagine if you're... <laughs> I mean, in my opinion, if I'm if I'm uh, Jeff 
Jarrett. I'm going to be a little upset that my wife is thrown into that mix. I know you might be thinking that Karen Jarrett kind of deserves that because you're usually bashing her out here anyway, but she's the vice president of our knockouts division to boot. So, I mean, we'll have to see what happens. I'd love to hear what's on the minds of the Jarretts and what do you say at this point in time in anticipation of this steel cage match? Did we send it to the back? I think JB's in place. JB, are you ready? JB certainly, and the Jarretts, take yeah, it. Thank you very much, Mike and Taz. Certainly a very tense situation here backstage. About to bring in Jeff and uh, Karen Jarrett. I gotta ask you guys. Yeah. You could say that. A steel cage match about to go down here tonight. And Jeff Jarrett, you know the stipulation, you know what's at stake here, obviously. If it is yourself victorious. Do you know where I've been the last three days? Do you tell me? Tell me. You've been on the TNA cruise. Tell in the you where I've been. I've been on the Coastal Chaos Direct Auto Insurance Cruise. Been a freaking company man. And what do I get? I get a text. I get phone calls. I get emails. The Twitter blows up. And I'm hearing the stinger has a little extra added stipulation. I agreed to one final match with Hardy. Either he goes from TNA for good or he gets what he so dearly beloves. And that's that world title. That's, a, that's that world title. So what does Sting do? He's got to up the ante. I'm sailing the seas. International waters with my bride being company people, That's right. oh, doing no. the job of others. Help and what do we get done? We get an extra added stipulation that stipulates if I somehow, some way get beat in a match tonight, a cage match, and there's four ways to win it or four ways to lose it. Pinfall, submission, out through the door or up over the top of the cage. You damn right I'm not losing. Jeff Hardy, I've forgotten more about cage matches than you'll ever know, boy. Because my strategy is going to be real simple, real simple. You think you're going to be in your element standing on top of that cage? You think you're going to be in your element just being ready? Just getting in there and feeling it. Ooze the, the, the charismatic enigma is going to ooze charisma tonight when he steps inside that cage. Well, Hardy, I'm going to ground you down. I'm going to take you out of your element. And then I'm going to make you submit. Or I'm going to pin your shoulders to the mat. One, two, three. And then, my friend, you will be gone. Then, my friend, the stipulation is you lose and one of you gets fired. Oh. Are you ready? Are you ready, Karen? This is the biggest bunch of crap. Is up next, it is the cage match. So much at stake. Let's take a look at Jeff Jarrett versus Jeff Hardy. Come on. Jeff Hardy, my God, somebody with some balls around here needs to go out there and put you in your place. You think you can just walk back in here week after week? Is that what it's about? How many times is the screw-up going to get to screw up? You think being a man is showing up at Turning Point and using your tactics that you use to win the match? Is that what being a man is? Is she trying to say that I didn't beat her man fairly? You sure as hell didn't beat my man fairly. You want one last shot? I'll walk away from ever, huh? That's all you're asking, right? You ain't kidding <laughs> You, of all people, think about the example Hardy's been setting for the fans, for the talent, for the wrestlers. I want him gone, and I want him gone for good. We need to put you in a match at final resolution against Jeff Hardy. As a matter of fact, we're going to put you in a cage. If you're out of the cage first, then your dream comes true. Jeff Hardy has agreed to leave Impact Wrestling if you win the match. On the other hand, if Jeff Hardy gets out of the ring first, your worst nightmare comes true because Jeff Hardy becomes the number one contender at Genesis for the world title. Look at Jared run to try and get away from him. Not going to be able to run and find a resolution when you're locked in the cage with the charismatic enigma, Jeff. Jeff Jarrett battles the charismatic enigma, Jeff Hardy inside the steel cage. Well, it's a steel cage 
match. The winner is determined by pinfall submission for the first to escape the cage. Introducing first from the Hendersonville, Tennessee, Jack Jarrett. Every Jeff Jarrett interview for over the past decade, I can tell you that that is a concerned Jeff Jarrett that comes to the ring with his wife Karen in tow, and he should be concerned. Yeah, I agree with you, Mike. I mean, Jarrett definitely, he seems a little bit off, uh, off his rocker. He's usually a little more calmer and cooler. Wasn't in control right there. I agree with you. There's a lot at stake here. Oh, that's an understatement, right? I mean, his, his career on the line, or his wife's career here at Impact Wrestling is on the line. Definition of high stakes. Exactly. And his opponent from Cameron, North Carolina, the charismatic enigma, Jeff Hardy. Sported by the charismatic enigma Jeff Hardy. In that mindset for this steel cage match against Jeff Jarrett. And much like Jeff and Karen with their jobs at stake here tonight. Same thing for Jeff Hardy. He's got to leave TNA. He's going to leave Impact Wrestling. If Jeff Jarrett wins this match, Hardy victorious. He goes on to a world title shot. Huge, huge implications in this case, Al. And you know, let's not forget, someone's going to be handcuffed to a man named Stick. And that someone is Karen Jarrett, the wife of Jeff Jarrett. So, I don't know, man. I, this, this deck seems like a little bit stacked, in my view, towards Jeff, towards Jeff Hardy's paper. It's just my wait, 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 wait a minute. What? Stacked in your view because Sting wants to ensure that Karen Jarrett doesn't interfere? How is that stacked? To, to me, that's just balancing things off so that we get a one-on-one -on -one match. Wow, so, so, I, well, in my opinion, I don't think it's fair that Sting just added the stipulation yesterday. That was a combo. Oh, you think? Slider, too. Happily making his way down the ramp, handcuffs in hand. Yeah, you're not kidding. Sting just put it right in the face of Jeff Jarrett. And now, oh my God, that Karen. He's a hellcat to say the least. She don't be handcuffed to Sting. Jarrett's got a wrestler match in a cage where his career's on the line, as is Jeff Hardy's. And now he's got to worry about his wife being handcuffed. He's got to negotiate with Sting here. People all over the world talking about Impact Wrestling, TNA, Final Resolution. Perfect example why your wife can't come to work with you. See what I mean, Mike? It's a perfect example. JB gives me the heads up for an angle James Storm. Both trending on Twitter. People all over the world talking about this final resolution event. And there, that's the great equalizer. The icon cuffed to Karen Jarrett. Yeah, I think you're right that Karen. Karen Jarrett, she's not going anywhere. Handcuffed to a six foot three, 265 pound sting, you know? And the icon's loving it because we all realize that now we're finally gonna have the best man win between Jeff Hardy and Jeff Jarrett. And you think back to last month's pay-per-view turning point? It was a hat trick.
three wins for the charismatic Enigma Jeff Hardy, but he just needs one victory tonight to not only ensure that title shot, but yep. to remove Jeff Jarrett permanently from this organization. Jarrett quickly going for the pin, and makes sense to me. Pin attempts right off the bat by Jarrett, realizing how important this is. By the way, you win this thing is pinfall, submission, or escape the cage. So, you know, that's... Multiple uh, options. Multiple options, but right now, Jarrett, he's not looking too good, buddy. Basement drop kick by Hardy on top for two. You heard Jarrett say that, I know, I, I forgot more about cage matches, Hardy, than you, 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 uh, you know, learned. I don't know if I, that might be stretching the truth a little bit. Did, did you notice at the same time that Jarrett referred to Hardy being in his element out here? Jeff Hardy, not afraid of high-risk moves. Uh, no, that's true. You know, you're playing psychiatrist now, but that that is uh, <laughs> that is true. Yeah, no, Jeff Hardy's definitely not afraid of high-risk moves, and maybe that is in the brain of Jeff Jarrett. It sounded like it to me. Look, look at this. Whoa, here, here goes Hardy. That's one of the options, escaping over the top of the cage. Jarrett cuts him off, gets cut with the boot by Hardy, and then the double sledge. Jeff Jarrett has been on a mission to eliminate oh. Jeff Hardy from this organization. And this is your opportunity, oh. Jeff, as you continue to meet the cage. Face first goes Jarrett twice, just bouncing off the steel. Well, Jeff Hardy resting like his career is at stake here, and there's an opportunity sit for him if he gets a victory, so there's a, a twist. twist. Oh. Quick attempt to twist the fate. Stopped and blocked by Jared. Look at this. Look at this. For the figure four, drops down and caps it off. There it is. You win like this. That is a submission. And Hardy's a long ways from yeah. getting a rope break. Tough hold to get out of, Mike, as you know. Shoulders down for two and almost got beat right there as, as Hardy was, I think, trying to regroup, figure out what do I do next? What's my best option here? Do I try and slide over, get the break of the ropes? Maybe do I use my own weight and try and turn this, to this the, figure to four belly, around? Right, turn to your stomach, and that reverses the pressure where it would be right now, as it is, on Jarrett. Forcing Jarrett to reach out and grab the ropes. Jarrett checking to see if he was opened up when he went head first into the steel. Lines oh, up hard oh, and just wow. rams him right into the side of the cage. Yeah, Jeff Hardy, I mean, just driven extremely in violent fashion by Hardy. There's another one coming, I think. Wow. Viciousness of Jarrett is. Hardy just bounced. Look at this. Look at the steel. And look at Jarrett. He's getting out of here. Hardy better hurry up or he's done. And then Hardy does exactly that. Sting with that bird's eye view. Oh my God. You see that landing by Hardy. And here comes Jarrett to follow up. Awesome camera angle we have from the top there. Takes you right inside the cage, doesn't it? Well, it does. I mean, great view to bring you inside of this match. Another escape attempt by Jared is oh, God. answered oh, God. by Hardy, who crotches Jared across that top rope. And now Jeff's got the Jeff Hardy has the opportunity right to away. climb out. Hardy able to kick off Jarrett. Oh my God! Oh. Wow. Splashing down off the ropes right into the pin for two. And you can see that Hardy's favoring his head. I think on that landing right there when he came at that unique angle off the ropes, that when Hardy landed on top of Jarrett, I think he, he hit his head on yeah. the canvas. He might have like uh, relaxed his neck or something. That's what it looked like. Of these steel cage matches, man, they pick they pick your body apart, you know. You just can't. There's not a lot of, of these type of matches in your, your career, because you can't last. Long-term effects of being in a steel cage match like this—it's something 
that's going to have an impact on your entire career going forward. Oh, what a shot. You can see that. Right in the face. Again, that was just a camera's brought you right into the smash of the face by Hardy into Jarrett. Well, this time, Jarrett one step ahead, comes fighting back, missed with the big right. Twist, Twist though, caught him. Twist of fate that time, connects. Got him, man. Jarrett down. Is Hardy gonna go for the pin, or is he gonna go for the escape? I think he could just, he maybe should have just went for the pin, and Jarrett, or Karen, wait, what's... He's not satisfied. He's got to go high risk. That's Hardy's. He had That's the Hardy's chance. Stop. He had the chance to go out the door. Instead, went to the top. Another one. Connects again with the twist of fate. I think for a moment Hardy second gets himself, but again the second twist of fate. Jarrett stopped moving. Hardy. Oh my God. Hardy's gonna get out of here. Hardy up to the top. Whoa, whoa, this is his whoa, chance. Minute, to, Mike. He can. He can just. Make his way down the cage, get the world title match at Genesis, there's and no eliminate need. one of the Jarrett's. There's no need for this. Mike just leaves them. He's not gonna. He's not gonna lead. He's not gonna escape. Oh my God! Oh my God! What a swanton attempt off the, the top of the cage, but Jarrett rolls out of the way, and now it's advantage Jarrett because Hardy's down and out. God, we gotta take look another look. Look at this. Look at the impact. Oh my God! another Jarrett. thing, long-term career uh, that, 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 that he's going to feel forever. Jarrett's going to win the match. Just roll out. Hardy's not moving much at all. Jarrett sliding out the door. Hardy's going to be done. Hardy's going to be... But, but Hart... Jarrett, 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 Jarrett is. Yeah. But Hardy able to drag him back inside the cage. Ooh! Great veteran move right there by Jeff Jarrett. Spinning and just kick Jarrett. I'm sorry, Hardy in the face. Broke action, bam, right, man, right there. Face first again. Jarrett's patented offensive move as he makes eye contact with his wife. He just said he wants the door open. Calling for the door to be open. Senior official Earl Hebner opens the that's door. It. That's it. Right on the spot, I love it. Referee inside, referee outside. Taking Hard, care of all goes, possibilities. Right? Hardy's gonna be done. Jarrett slowly making his way out. Hardy leaps across the ring and hooks the ankle and gonna try and drag him in, but at the same time, Jarrett's trying to make his way out and just touch the floor. She's dangerous here, Hardy on the outside. What the hell? Oh! Hardy flies in and, and catches Jarrett right on the money. Caught him with the kick. Oh, oh, God, she got nailed. Hardy went. That was a whole chain effect it, it, right there. It's like a chain reaction. Hardy, Hardy, Hardy went head first into the, into the cage door that came open, and the cage door caught Sting. Oh, took out Sting, Sting, Sting and the ref, but Karen, she was able to get that key, it looked like, and then hook herself. And oh, Karen, my God! Oh. And now Karen uses the steel cage door on, on Jeff Hardy, and that's the entire reason that Sting was out here. That's it. That is it. Wife of the year goes to Karen Jarrett. Jeff, Hardy's Jeff gone. Jarrett on top. Hardy's Hardy gone. Hardy's gone from TNA. Here's two. Done. Goodbye, Hardy. Oh! Well, wait a minute. What? Karen's got the guitar trying to pass it in to her husband, but Sting catches her from behind, preventing the Jeff, guitar Jeff's, going into play. Jeff's got his eyes on his wife with Sting. And, oh, my God. Oh! Twist of fate by Hardy again. Follow cover. Hardy's got him. Referee turns. Referee counts two. He's got him. And three. Your winner, Jeff Hardy. Oh my God! Think, think, of, think of what we've just witnessed here. Think of think of the, the ramifications for the Jarrett family. 
I, I, I don't know what to say. I mean, one of them's going to be fired. Fired from Impact Wrestling. Speechless, Mike. I can't believe this. And Sting, the man wow. in charge, raising the hand post that celebration for Jeff Hardy. But you're right, one of the Jarrett's, be it Jeff or be it Karen, is, is, is going to be fired. Let's hear what Sting has to say. Four days from now, on Thursday, someone's getting fired! I guess we find out this Thursday on Impact. Oh my God, I can't believe this, Mike. The founder of the company, he could be gone. The, the icon stay tells the world, well, you've got to join us this Thursday for Impact Wrestling because it is going to be on Thursday night when Sting announces whether it's Jeff Jarrett, whether it's Karen Jarrett, who is fired and has to leave this organization. Wow, what, what, we, what we just witnessed here, and at the same time, Jeff Hardy now moves into a World Heavyweight title shot next month at Genesis. Yeah, that, that? That, that's even the bigger picture, but I, I really think, my opinion, that <laughs> Sting putting in this out of nowhere curveball, as you said it, this stipulation in yesterday, I think that it's just been in the brain of Jeff Jarrett, and that screwed him up for this whole thing. I really do, and that's why he lost, I'm telling you. That's my opinion. We're going to find out Thursday night whether it's Jeff or Karen, which of the Jarrett's that's gone for good from TNA. Jeff Hardy moves into the title shot next month at Genesis, and, and let's talk world title because that's what's still to come. It's Bobby Roode. It's the phenomenal AJ Styles. It's not just any world heavyweight title match, though. This is Iron Man rules. Sting laid it down. We're going to go 30 minutes. And we're going to find out who the best man, best competitor is, because in that 30-minute time period, it's whoever wins the most falls, pin or submission. And Mike, you know as well as me, it's going to be a hard-hitting 30 minutes. So, I mean, I really believe it's a toss-up. That's no disrespect to our World Heavyweight Champion, Bobby Roode. I mean, AJ Styles, he has been World Champ. He's a Grand Slam Champion True. here in this world of Impact Wrestling. So AJ knows how to become champ, so I, this, this is going to be crazy. Taz, earlier tonight, we had pre-match comments from the challenger, AJ Styles. And at this time, let's preview our World Heavyweight Title Final Resolution main event as we send it to JB with the world champion, Bobby Roode. Thank you very much, Mike Tanay and AJ Styles. Certainly fearless going into this, admitting, uh, maybe not admitting that he's 100%, but certainly with the trainer there wrapping up his leg, AJ Styles did not appear to be at 100%. However, he said he is at 200%. My guest at this time, the world heavyweight champion himself, Bobby Roode tonight, set to go 30 minutes, one-on-one -on -one with the phenomenal one, AJ Styles. Most pinfalls at the end of the matchup. That man will be the world heavyweight champion. You know, JB, over the last several months, I've been called many things. Robert, Bobby, a number one contender, a liar, a cheater, pathetic, selfish, the it factor, and my personal favorite, the world heavyweight champion. And tonight, after I'm through with you, AJ, I will be known as the king of the Iron Man matches. Sting, you want to throw your authority around and try to one-up me each and every week? Well, keep on doing it. Because the fact of the matter is, on paper, this may favor AJ Styles. But AJ, I will be very, very surprised if you even make it to the ring after I did what I did to you Thursday night. So Sting, keep throwing around your authority. Because in case you haven't heard, I spit in the face of authority. Ask Dixie Carter. All right, it is the main event. 30-minute Iron Man match is next here at Final Resolution. 
The TNA World Heavyweight Champion Bobby Roode's road to final resolution has consisted of highs and lows. From day one in this business, people would come up to me and say, Bobby, you got what it takes to be a top guy, to be a world champion one day. Well, that one day came, and I'm a world champion. Whatever it takes, Bobby Roode learned from his crushing defeat at Bound for Glory that championship gold could only be raised if he was willing to go all the way. Was I happy with my performance in the match at Bound for Glory? Yes and no. I was happy that I was able to compete with a guy like Kurt Angle, but I was upset at the fact that I lost to Kurt Angle. It made me realize that in today's society, you have to win at all costs, no matter what. Real great world champion we've got, huh? A guy that turns his back on his best friends. Wow, what a champ. I'm sick of AJ. AJ's not the face of this company. Bobby Roode's the face of this company. I'm the freaking heavyweight champion of the world. AJ Styles is jealous. He's always been jealous. It's time to shut his mouth. Shut his mouth. I am the star of the show. AJ Styles only wishes he could be like me. He wasn't brought up to basically cheat. Doing the right thing gets you nowhere. I really don't know what to say to him. Rue takes a shortcut and keeps the title. He's not the one here that has to deal with why is daddy cheating. I don't care who I step on. I don't care who I hurt. Tracy's here with two kids and Bobby's not around. We've left numerous messages trying to get a hold of him. I can't even get in touch with him. I try and phone and I don't get a call back. I am the leader of the selfish generation. I am the it factor of professional wrestling. Professional wrestling. Selfish, selfish person. Bobby's not seeing how selfish he's been. When he turned around and spit at me, that was worse than hitting me. I'm sick and tired of the way he's acting. And if he thinks he's going to continue to get away with it, he is sorely mistaken. It's not even about the world title. It's about Bobby Roode being a freaking Why don't we just test the waters at final resolution in a 30-minute Iron Man match for the world title? This is my time. This is my era. And there isn't anything or anybody that's going to get in my way. The phenomenal AJ Styles takes on Bobby Roode in an Iron Man match for the World Heavyweight Championship. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what we have been building to. Anticipation throughout this final resolution pay-per-view event takes us to our main event for the World Heavyweight title.
It's obvious that AJ Styles is not going to be 100%. He could say it's 200%. I don't care. That's going to be a big target. That knee, AJ's knee will be a huge target to Bobby Roode. It's got to be. Even the champion referenced that in the pre-match interview with JB. And speaking of Jeremy Borash, we're going to send it to center ring. Set the stage, JB, for this final resolution main event. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is scheduled for one fall. It is a 30-minute Iron Man matchup. This is your main event of the evening. When the bell rings, the man in charge, TNA official, Mr. Brian Hebner. And now, live from Universal Studios, Orlando, Florida, Direct Auto Insurance proudly presents your main event of the evening. Introducing, first of all, standing in the corner to my left, he weighed in this morning at 222 pounds and comes to us from Gainesville, Georgia. He is the challenger, the phenomenal A.J. And now, introducing, standing in the corner to my right, he weighed in this morning at 235 pounds and comes to us from Toronto, Ontario, Canada. He is the current reigning and defending TNA heavyweight champion of the world, Bobby Roode. Leader of the selfish generation, holds that World Heavyweight Championship belt so proudly in the air. These recent actions that we've seen, so uncharacteristic from the Bobby Roode that we've known for so many years, but to me, nothing lower than spitting in the face of our TNA president, Dixie Carter, just a disgusting oh, display I agree. I agree from, from someone who's supposed to be your World Heavyweight Champion. Come no, on. I, I told, it doesn't matter if you're World Champion or not, you don't, don't do you. that, obviously. You know, I mean, not only is... Dixie called it a TNA president, but uh, she is a lady. I mean, that, so that that in itself is, uh, you know, you just don't do that. You don't do that to anyone, lady or man. But Bobby Roode just showing the world it's all about Bobby Roode. Let's talk about strategy in this world heavyweight title match, and especially because of the Iron Man rules. This is a marathon. This isn't a sprint. Yes, number sir. One. But it is important to get that first leg up, to get that first pin on the board and gain some momentum in this match. Oh, I definitely think so. I mean, you don't want to put it in cruise control once you do get a victory. But, you know, if, if right now, listen, the bottom line, the story to me here with this thing is, if you are AJ, you really got to try and prevent that. A drop toe hold, something basic, see? Something basic like that. To I've had knee injuries, okay? Anybody who has had knee injuries will tell you, they don't just go away miraculously during the match. You know, it, it, it'll linger. So, I respect AJ's heart, his toughness. He's not hiding the fact that this knee was getting wrapped up. Bobby Roode beat the living daylights out of that knee just this, this past Thursday. AJ, however, the first to tell us he's he's never one of those people who stays on the sidelines with an injury, willing, able to go tonight. The realization that the World Heavyweight title is at stake will keep you apprised of both the time remaining in this 30-minute Ironman match as well as the score when it comes to pins whether they be obtained by a pin or a submission. Well, I, I would I would think, if, you know, I would want to get a submission victory right away. Because a submission can wear someone down. You know, wear a guy down, uh, either on a, you know, if I'm Rob, uh, Bobby Roode, I want to try and go for some kind of a leg bar or something, a figure four, and see Bobby put in his face, showing age, look at me, my legs are yep. perfect. Doing jumping jacks, jumping up and down anything to try and get inside the head of the phenomenal AJ Styles. I thought it was interesting that Rude said in his pre-match interview with JB that on paper, Iron Man rules would favor an AJ Styles. But then you take into account that vicious attack at the conclusion of this past Thursday night's Impact Wrestling and all of a sudden maybe that on paper favoritism for AJ well, is evened up. Why don't we give uh, Bobby Roode, our World Heavyweight Champion, some credit? Uh, it's pretty obvious it was a calculating move this past Thursday. You'll have your opponent go into this 30-minute match with an injury. 
And that's exactly what I think Bobby Roode did. Hence why he attacked the man's leg so violently and viciously this past Thursday. Like AJ trying to get out of that top wrist lock and then from a headlock. Gets himself, sorry, gets Bobby Roode into a headlock. So, again, trying to keep that left, I believe it's the left leg of AJ. So AJ's taking a knee, trying to prevent Bobby from grabbing that leg. Yeah, it was interesting there that even though Roode was in the side headlock, you still saw his hand reaching around to try sure. and see where that, that, that left side, that left leg and knee of AJ Styles was at in relation to himself. That's the key. You brought up something you said, the word C. When you're in a side headlock, a lot of people, most people have never been in a, a properly applied side headlock. You can't see. You know, so the guy's grip is across your eyes, so it's tough to see. That same side headlock wears down the champ. Yeah, this is good for AJ. This is smart here. Keep your leg away. Wear down if you can, the world champion. Good quick head scissors right there by Rude. He's really got that head scissors it's nice and tight. And you see how AJ is reaching up and trying to use his own hand to get that, that grip that Rude has. The leg strength here of Rude right across the head. Got to get that leg off your throat. AJ knows that. Got to try and kick out, but that will affect your knee. But see, was smart what AJ did. When he kicks out, look at the little things. When AJ kicked his legs out, his heel, his left foot never hit the mat. All about the landing. Yeah, he, he landed on his back. That's a little subtle thing that you know, you can't see, but that was smart by AJ, so his foot and leg never hit the mat. You can see AJ just, I mean, he's applying this head side headlock and he's trying to put some pressure down this too. Having to run, it's not, you know, not gonna be fun for AJ either. Shoulder block connects in the second one as well. Every time he makes impact with Rude, though, you see him re reaching down and favoring quick cover, quick pin attempt here, and just like as that. quickly the escape by Rude to slow things down. We talked about it earlier, dictating the pace, and maybe in an Iron Man rules match, there is nothing more important than dictating the pace. Oh, you, it's clock management. I mean, if you get an opportunity to get a victory, you gotta try to, you know, uh, if you get a victory, you know, you got 25 minutes in this thing to go. So if you get a victory, uh, it's going to be tough <laughs> to stall or keep an opponent away for, you know, over 20 minutes. That that would be a tough thing to do, but the toughest thing is to get one of these guys to get a victory on the other uh, uh, right away. They're both so highly talented. AJ Grand Slam champion, current world champion right there, and Bobby Roode. So, you know, you got two, you know, Guys in their prime that are both, you can see from their bodies, they're in amazing physical condition in their primes. In their prime, I should say, without the S. This time, Rude able to take AJ, set him up in the corner, and then quickly drops down and connects with the shoulder block, lines him up again. And a second time, it's that shoulder driven into the midsection of Styles. Well, see, I, you know, you see that. How Bobby Roode started working on the midsection, those nasty chops. Look at AJ turning it back around. I was thinking that uh, Bobby Roode might try to distract AJ from going towards his knee, but AJ just bringing it. Yeah, lighting up the chest of the champ. Roode shot off into the corner and sent way up in the lights with a back body drop. And, and even a move like the back body drop, you sense right there AJ reaching down and favoring that that injured left knee and leg. Bobby went right to the eyes right there to stop. Oh, my God. Oh. AJ Styles. AJ just splattered on the outside. So far, 0-0 zero, zero in regards to pinfalls or submissions. So. Yeah, nearly seven minutes in to this Iron Man match, but with Styles taken out to the arena floor. Rude gonna try and follow up the edge that he has by using the guardrail, but AJ turns it around on him. AJ needed that to slow down Bobby Rude. If I'm AJ, I want to uh, I would get in the ring and just try to you know, regroup, get my second win, and hopefully the, my knee can start feeling a little bit better. But that's not AJ. AJ keeps coming at you. He's not stopped. Smart by Rude to capitalize on AJ. Just that little thing of AJ coming into the ring, 
senses that there's the opening, yep. and Rude attacks. Look at that, that's the knee, the left knees. Bobby Rude has it hooked, and you see what AJ's doing, he's got a front headlock preventing Bobby from pulling him out by that leg. Old theory there, grab onto that head and you, you're able to control the rest Whole body, of, the body yeah. of, of your opponent and it worked for AJ just when when it looked like Rude was, was gonna try and, and take advantage of that knee. This is where, uh, you know, the World Heavyweight Champion, Bobby Roode is his most dangerous when he has some sort of control on you. But look at AJ, nice counter. Yeah, roll up out of the get corner one. by Styles, then bridges back, but instead it's now Roode on top. Quick sit out by Styles, nice, using nice. his legs to take Roode over for two. Uh-oh. Wait a minute. Look at this, Wait, look at this. Roode thought he was gonna roll through. AJ had a different idea. High hip toss takeover by Styles. Deep arm drag follows. Wow, that little bit of a size advantage that the world champion has on the challenger, AJ Styles, was enough. Oh, wait. Oh, very well done right there by AJ. It's just an, an insane athlete is AJ Styles. Champ gets the boot up in the corner. Look at this. Look at that. AJ sneaks up from behind, comes off the ropes with a clothesline and a quick cover in. Just two. Again, no falls in the first nine minutes of this Iron Man match. 0-0 zero, zero at this point in the 30 minutes. If this match has been allotted, it's whoever gains the most yeah, pins this... or submissions that will leave final resolution with the World Heavyweight title. We could see this thing end in a one nothing score. I mean, that's definitely the way uh, it seems like it's heading. Because both men are evenly matched. You see right there up top, 0-0, zero, zero, and uh, AJ, uh-oh, 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 oh! oh. Man. That's what Rude's been waiting for. Ele elevate Styles, works on the, the leg, but AJ wow. gonna come oh. fighting right back. Forearm shot. He's hurting. AJ is in a lot of pain. Oh, man. AJ oh, he's done it again. He, again. Oh, AJ's relied so much on that side headlock through the first 10 minutes of this match, and on several occasions we've seen Rude take him out of the side headlock and, and focus on God. the knee, and right oh, there, my chop God. him out of the corner. He's got to get one down. here. Rude on top, and wow. that is fall number one. Bobby Rude takes a one nothing lead, scoring the first pin a third of the way in this Iron Man match, right at the 10 minute mark for, for Bobby Roode to take a one to nothing lead. And yeah, you, you said just moments ago, this could be wow. a pit, this could be a pitcher's duel. This could be oh, yeah. this, a one to nothing final. This is close to, you know, oh, 19 minutes and 30 seconds and AJ just really just having a real hard time with that, with that left leg and he's still fighting AJ, no shocker there. What we've come to expect in the near decade that this organization has been in existence from AJ Styles. Well, AJ knows, he knows that he's, he's now he's, you know, he's got to play catch up here. But at the same time, you don't want to go too desperate with your offensive moves, correct? No, they're totally, totally correct. I, I think AJ's smart enough to realize that he's a, no, he's, uh, again, like we said, Grand Slam champion. I mean, he's got oh, tons of big match oh. experience, but that was ugly there. Oh. Flying across the ring goes Bobby Roode. Focus, concentration, one thing. The knee of AJ. The previously injured leg taken out by Roode. Man, I'll tell you, this is, oh, my God, oh, my God. Oh, oh, oh tough to watch. God. God, the pain that AJ has to be in right now. Look at this now. Scissors the leg, does rude. Drops down with his strength. Goes for the lateral cover on AJ, uh, who's able to kick out. Bobby Rude's got 18 minutes here. He's got full control. He's got a victory under his belt. It's one nothing. He could just keep this offense on that leg and get a submission on there or something. Get another victory. Well, AJ still coming back. Fighting spirit of Styles answered by the rude shot, but then AJ right back on the chip again. Oh. Oh. Man, you can hear.
here. The flesh getting smashed by Bobby Roode on AJ. AJ just crumbled. Boot first, then the clubbing blow to the back as Roode measures Styles for what could be a, a suplex attempt. Instead, AJ floats over. Ooh. Quick grab through the leg by, God. by Roode, who again applies the pressure, the force and the impact on the knee. You can see that little devilish grin on the face of Bobby Roode. He knows he is just full bore in the driver's seat right now. Catford seat for the champ. Level of confidence rises as he comes from behind on Styles and just drags him up to his feet. But AJ able to fight back elbow first. AJ's got to pull something out here, Mike. He's got to do something. His clock is ticking away. And AJ just went down. Just crumbled to the pressure. AJ using, trying to use his leg strength again, but instead it's stopped by Rude with a single leg crab. Yep, single leg Boston crab, one of the most painful holes someone could be in. AJ's gonna, he's, he's, he's gonna have no option but to tap out here. If I was him, I'd tap out quick and go and beat oh, over that, two. That puts him down two zip. I know you're that. Saying, you're saying tap out now so, so that, that, that the leg doesn't get injured worse right. to the point where he's not gonna have any chance. Correct. Look at AJ. He's scratching and clawing to get to that rope. Oh, fingertips just an inch or so oh away from God. making contact. And finally, AJ gets the rope breaking. You know that Rude's going to milk the five count. Yeah, but at what, what expense? I mean, how long was that single leg grab on on the injured, already injured leg of AJ Styles? Damage is done. Oh. Difficult to watch, isn't it? Yeah, that's tough. I don't... I, I, I've had a couple of knee operations over the years, and uh, from knee injuries, they straight up suck. Gonna go figure four here. Yes, drops down. Uh, you don't know what kind of damage is going on in AJ's leg. Let me that one ACL, MCL. You don't know. I mean, oh, and AJ oh just God. screaming out in pain as Rude sits back and applies the pressure and torques on the leg of Styles. Shoulders down for one. I, I don't know, whatever happens in this match at the end, whoever wins or whatever, oh, boom! I, I, I'm thinking that AJ might have some ligament damage or something to that knee just by what's been going on here. We have reached the halfway point of our World Heavyweight Title Iron Man match as Bobby Roode continues to apply the pressure with the figure God. four. And every time he puts that pressure on Mike, because you know with this type hold, your back is down, and the referee Brian Hebner doing the right thing. He's got to count you down. You still got to kick out. And he it, AJ just tapped that. Yeah, he had to. He Bobby Roode now makes it two nothing. Roode two styles nothing. See, at my point was AJ could have did that two minutes ago at the 16 minute mark. My my opinion, I mean, it was something like 16. And minutes. have a lot less damage to the yeah. leg and knee. Yeah, but he's got a lot of heart. AJ's, you know, he's just, he, his fortitude. You know, yeah. I mean, that's what it is with him. Two to nothing lead in the Iron Man match for the World Heavyweight Champion. And Bobby Roode. He's just you're, prancing you're around in, the ring, buddy. Control, bud. He's just prancing around the ring. Champ is. His clock is just tick, tick, ticking away. And that man right there, the world champion, has got a two nothing lead on AJ in this 30 minute Iron Man match. Challenger has to use the ring ropes just to get back up oh, to his feet. God. And when he does, he's immediately taken down again by the champ. Yeah, he's just a nasty chop block. Blindside chop block from behind and AJ just flipped around and you can see the man's face. AJ just a pain he's in. He is in agony. That knee is shot. He's gonna blow his knee out here if it's not blown out already. No surprise that Rude. Goes right back to working on the leg and knee. Going to step over again for the figure four attempt. Ooh. He's shoved off by AJ. Well, Bobby's face really hit that buckle hard, man. With his shoulder hit. Maybe it was his shoulder. Looked like he was favoring his shoulder as he got up and now holding his arm down at his side like it is the shoulder. I think it was his front of his shoulder. I thought it was side of his face. I was wrong. Oh, there. A quick drop down move with the arm extended, trying to pop the elbow of Bobby Roode. Look at this. He's gonna go cross face. It's this Bobby.
Bobby Roode submission hole. Can, can AJ, can AJ get back in this and, and get a, get a, a pin here, get a, get a fall with Roode's own submission? Oh, Roode's Look at that. Oh, 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 man. Styles via submission. Now, Roode two, Styles one. That's a shocker. That came out of nowhere. Just from kicking the man off, and he, his shoulder hit that second buckle did uh, Bobby Roode. And then AJ with that cross face. And AJ, maybe, get on that shoulder, man. Don't waste no time. Saying, maybe Roode had that same strategy that you talked about earlier. Tap out now and, yeah. and, and still have the lead at 2-1 to one as we go under 12 oh minutes. God. AJ, now you know he's got to be thinking, I'm going to rip this guy's arm off his body. Don't blame him, AJ. Not just for the World Everywhere Championship, but... Just to survive out here. Just to think these guys used to be in fortune together. These guys are best of friends. Look at this here. He's gonna try to pop the elbow now. Sitting back with his weight. On route, extending and trying to pop him. That's exactly what he's popped the elbow and shoulder. Oh, nice inside instep sweep by Bobby Rude again. Back on the Left leg of AJ Styles. And AJ reaching back and doing anything within his power, whether it's break the eyes of Rude, oh, anything survive. to break. You gotta survive. Look at that round kick to the chest. You just don't have as, as much impact, even though you're going with the right leg because you don't have the good plant leg. The post, yeah, the post leg, the plant leg, the left leg is the injured leg. So you're right, you're exactly right. So you can't have that same torque in your kick. Challenger back to what has worked for him in this match. Uh, look, we're, I, we're heading towards a little bit of an even playing field here. That shoulder, the left arm and shoulder of Bobby Roode, the world champion's in trouble. And AJ knows it. <laughs> and that's why he's, go, he's all over Roode here. And just as Roode focused on the knee of AJ earlier, AJ on that, that shoulder, but that time Roode able to catch him right on the jawline. Ooh. Turned inside out with the clothesline as Styles goes down and you can sense right now, even though Rude connected with that move, he goes back to favoring it again. And we are now two-thirds of the way through this Iron Man match as we go under 10 minutes. Two to one, Bobby Rude. Roll up on a cradle. Roll up by Styles, gets two and he got it. He got it. <laughs> Styles with the pin. It is now tied. Two, two. How about that? Oh, oh man, that was huge. Even up Score, right here. Scoreboard tells the entire story. AJ caught Bobby. I think worried about that shoulder. And he cradled him up. AJ's confidence has got to be through the roof right now. My gotta be. Back from a 0-2 deficit oh. to tie it at 2-2. Two -two. And just as again AJ gets the offense rolling. And then AJ punched. Rude in the shoulder and that low round kick right to the leg by Rude, a punch right to the shoulder. Both men pinpointing the injuries. Yeah, both men taking oh, advantage God. of the weakness. Oh! That might have took a lot out of AJ there. Connected, but at, at what expense? One of those things that you have to wonder long term. Wasn't able to follow right up and, and get the pin at this point. But AJ back up into the O. Oh, double R spine buster. Rude float over, leg hook. Oh. Oh. Close, 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 but just two. Lots ticking. We're at 840 right now. 840 left, roughly. No room for breathing here. There's no room to stop the momentum of your opponent. How important is the next fall in this match? It tied 2-2. So big as that countdown clock goes under eight and a half. This is for the World Heavyweight Championship. But Rude, Rude might be looking to go for another single leg crab. Oh, no. Again, the torque right there on the knee is as Rude drops down with all of his weight and cranks and twists the injured leg. I think Bobby Rude himself is trying to regroup that shoulder and he's kind of taking his time. He's in some pain. 
Champ circles and goes right back to the legs of Styles. Sets up for a catapult and AJ oh, goes whoa, to the corner. Look at that, look at that, look at that! Jumps back over. Reverse oh. DDT attempt by AJ and I don't think he really caught it as, as, as good as he normally does because of the injured leg and knee. It was enough to stop the offense of the world champion. I know that much. AJ outside. Oh my God, AJ's he, not, he, he's, he's known for so many of his springboard moves. He can't springboard. He, can't he, springboard. he did oh. it instead. He went springboard. Right in the pin. Here's two. He got it. <laughs> AJ Styles with the pin. He now leads three to two. Oh, oh, AJ Didn't Styles. see this one coming. Oh, no, I didn't either. Oh, AJ can't oh, even God. follow up, man. He's... Almost as if it was just that desperation move by AJ. Pulling out all the stops to get. The desperation is the key, Mike, but there's six minutes and 40 That's seconds it. left. Just what I was going to point Let's out. Let's take another look at this springboard. 3-2 lead, and this is how he accomplished it. Look at this. Look at that. Just, that's why he's called phenomenal, folks. Look at in on the pin cover. Look at AJ. Also, the pain on the landing, if yeah. you notice, when he came springing off the ropes and, and went completely around, his knees hit the canvas. See, AJ putting three fingers in the face of Bobby Roode, trying to frustrate him a little bit. Telling him that he's got the three to two lead, spins him around, drops him with the clothesline, does Styles. AJ back on him again. Knife edge sets Roode up into the corner. Can't explain, Mike. Can't explain from a cardiovascular standpoint what 30 minutes will do to you out there. <laughs> I'll tell you, I've been in 30-minute matches there. They are excru excruciating tough. Very tough on your body and just breathing and you start burning in your chest. Nevertheless, an injury like AJ has to his leg and, and that Bobby Roode has to his shoulder. This grueling world title matchup sees AJ try and go for the arm again. Yeah, he went for like a Fujiwara arm bar, didn't get it all. A little quick double leg. AJ able to kick him off, send him into the corner. And as Styles comes in, he's taken back out to the, to the apron and then dropped down with Rude's arm extended over the top rope. AJ's looking good, man. Just about five minutes left. That's it. Five minutes. Just about. Sunset in. Rude drops oh, down. Oh, here we go. Look at this. The top rope for leverage. The referee didn't see it. Bobby Rude with the pin. It is now tied. Three, three. Positioning of the referee, Brian Hebner, was such that he never looked. He was in the show. And he saw that had top rope extra to three. Well, hey, by any means necessary. And now look, you can see right now, it's tied up 3 3, as you said. And AJ Styles, talk about being desperate. He's beating a holy high hell out of Rude because he's pissed that Rude just cheated to get that pin. Hebner able to drag Styles off of Rude. Damage done with the series of rights. Gotta get moving here, man. There's like four minutes and 10 seconds. If you're AJ to get an opportunity to win this championship, gotta start trying to get a pinfall or something here. Deadlocked at 3-3 three, three as we go under four minutes. AJ with the advantage as Rude is set up in the corner, but now positioned up on top and is AJ going to go from here? Almost AJ, like he's AJ having second can't, thoughts. Can't, well, it's tough for him to climb and leave with his left leg. That's why he, lead, he had to leave with his right leg. He's going to try to Does, does, he, have push the, off does he have the strength? To oh, go, my God. Oh, look at this. He's going to try and go superplex. And look. when he does. Oh, man. Rude just. Yep, Rude caught him with the right hand. What's hands. Rude doing? Wait, what's Rude? What the hell's Rude? Watch out! Oh. AJ arm drags. Rude from the top all the way down. And Rude landed on his shoulder. I'll tell you, Rude landed really hard there. It's three minutes, Mike. There's three minutes left here. Threes are wild. 3-3 three, three the score as we go under three minutes up into the air. Backdrop suplex by Styles. Rude's in so much pain in his shoulder. AJ, so much pain in the left knee. AJ limited with what he can do, but has 
a potential suplex here. Oh, that stopped right to the knee again. How about that, Mike? Huh? How smart was that? Not sure if AJ could have taken him over with the suplex anyway. Let's go for a fisherman, but oh, well, cradle. Quick reversal by Styles. Oh, he's on top he's got him. No, oh. no, no, just two. Great counter by Styles. Pele. Oh man. Pele nails Rude. Could this be the the move that enables AJ to take a 4-3 lead, tied 3-3. He's fired up, man. Hit the two-minute warning. AJ is fired up. Crowd responds. They can sense that AJ's got Rude where he wants him. Doubles him over. Gonna go for the clash here. If AJ hits this, we got a new champ. Oh, oh, oh my, just, oh my just, God. Look at that, Mike. The, the knee just buckled him. How about the way he fell back? Oh my God. His knee just completely gave out. Styles clash was just this close before the leg buckled and oh, wait, what, what Rude, uh, Rude's not even uh he's not even trying to capitalize here. Rude drops down to the arena floor as AJ, got like a minute 15 left right. here. Time's a waste in AJ. It is desperation oh my God. time. Oh! Sensational flip oh dive God. over the top by the phenomenal one. And AJ connects as we go a minute, under man. a minute in our main event world title match at final resolution. 3-3 three, three, tie. Rude and Styles. AJ just amazing flip and just throwing caution to the win. He's got to. I know, but you can't get a victory on the outside of the ring. Both of these men are on the outside. That's the dilemma for AJ. Rude was the one who went outside to the floor. AJ looked up at the clock. He just saw that he's got under 40 seconds here. I don't think Rude wanted to compete anymore. What did he get out of the ring for? He had AJ right where he wanted him. I don't know why he got out of the ring. Slowing down. Don't get pinned. Obviously, that's I, a strategy. I, I think he was trying to stall. That's my opinion. I'm with you. Look at him. He's looking at the clock, man. He's looking at the clock. And then he's getting back out in the ring. Yeah, as we go under 15 seconds, you're right. Now, now AJ was looking at it. And the challenger goes down again to a knee as we go to five oh, seconds forward. Rude escapes running. again. Damn it. What the hell is this? Ladies and gentlemen, this match is a 3-3 three, three draw. The World Heavyweight Championship remains with Bobby Roode. Oh, come on. Not like this. you got to be kidding me here. And Roode's ex he's ecstatic about it. He's happy about it. You know what this was about for Bobby Roode? All about survival. He's escaped with the title, Mike, to your point. That's all he cared about. That was it. It, it wasn't it wasn't in the mind of Bobby Roode tonight to beat AJ Styles. This is mine, AJ. It was all about this is mine. retaining the world heavyweight title, which is exactly what he did in this incredibly competitive match. For AJ, I'm the champ. That's exactly it. That's all Roode. You heard him just say, "I'm the champion." He just wanted to leave with the title. What a matchup, too. What a physical contest. Crowd here at final resolution, demanding more time. I Bobby, so Bobby Roode doesn't want any more time because tonight it wasn't about winning this match. It was about one thing for Bobby Roode. It was about survival and retaining the title. Of the world. Nobody can take it. Nobody. Say that!